Imagine with the subject property undergoing a conditional use permit, if it was approved, any change. Good evening, everyone. I'm Linda Paul, uh, vice chair of the uh, Moscow, um, what the heck are we tonight? Port of Adjustment. Uh, Port of Adjustment. It's, it's that kind of day, you know. I've, I've had a tough one, a long one. Um, I'm glad so many people are here tonight because at the last time that this matter was taken up, there were uh, a real handful, hardly anyone. So it's nice to see uh, many people here for this meeting. Um, we need to approve the minutes from the June 28th meeting. I'd entertain such a motion. I move a approval of the minutes of the June 28th meeting. Is there a second? I wasn't here. I'll second it. Okay, moved and seconded that the minutes be approved as circulated. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. And one abstention? One okay. abstention. One abstention. Um, <clears throat> we're going to, uh, we are taking up the conditional use permit uh, that has to do with uh, a um, uh, school and church facility uh, on Mountain View Road, and Mike Roy, our staff person, will introduce it. Thank you, Madam Chair, members of the board. Uh, before you tonight, we have a continuation of a public hearing for a conditional use permit and a variance request uh, for a 30-acre property located at 1515 North Mountain View Road uh, within Moscow. The proposal includes a conditional use permit, and that's for a school and a church a facility, uh, which are conditionally permitted uses within the single-family residential uh, R2 designation uh, for a private school campus uh, at 1515 Mountain View Road. Also including a variance request, and that's in order to uh, exceed the maximum height limitation for the underlying zone, which is 35 feet, uh, proposing around 46 feet for the school gymnasium building. The development is, is proposed to be developed in three phases, with the first phase uh, including the public roadway improvements, which uh, encompasses the extension of the public street, roundabout intersection, uh, as well as uh, a new street that would run north-south through the, the west side of the property. Also includes the installation of utilities, uh, site circulation in the parking uh, lot for the, the school building, and construction of the track and field uh, for the school. Second phase would include uh, just the school building itself, and the third phase would include the gymnasium, a church, and additional parking lots uh, needed for the development. Uh, like I mentioned before, the, the requested uh, variance is for building height. Uh, the proposed school and gymnasium is 46 feet in height, and uh, the, the applicant has uh, testified that uh, that's intended to uh, cater to uh, regulation sporting events. Uh, and the school building will match the 46 feet to allow uh, appropriate scaling in the building design, and those uh, uh, school events would include uh, activities in the gym. Operating characteristics of the school uh, be a traditional schedule mid-August through May, about 8.15 a.m. to 3.15 p.m. Uh, and 4 p.m. Uh, would be ending time for staff. June through mid-August, you're going to have summer camps, teacher trainings, and other similar activities. Year-round athletic and club practices and games in the afternoons and evenings. And this is just to familiarize yourself with the site. Like I mentioned, 30 acres in size. Uh, located uh, southeast corner of uh, Mountain View Road. You can see Mountain View Road here, uh, heading east-west, and then it heads, takes a 90-degree angle and heads due north. Uh, you can see Darby Road uh, up here in the distance. Uh, Mountain View Park is located directly west of this property. Uh, within the north, east, and south, you have mainly uh, agricultural properties with some single-family dwellings uh, scattered throughout. You have uh, City of Moscow, uh, city limits boundary, which is represented by this orange line. This property was annexed and rezoned uh, to the comp plan designation uh, earlier this year uh, by city council. Also included uh, within the vicinity would be uh, just standard subdivision development, mainly single family residential uh, within, the, within the city of Moscow. Uh, we also have Good Samaritan Village on the south side of F Street there. Just wanted to, to show the, the floodplain. You do have Paradise Creek 
uh, which flows through corners of the property, the northwest corner, as well as the, the southwest corner. Uh, the dash, or the, uh, yeah, the crosshatch line here represents the flood way. Uh, the red line represents the 100 year flood plain. These are two foot contour uh, lines within the subject property. Uh, represents a two foot elevation change. So uh, relatively flat, you have a little bit of increased elevation in the southeast corner uh, of the property. And I, I do you know, want to mention that uh, this study uh, that we're currently going off of for the, the flood insurance rate map, which sets the 100 the year floodplain, is a 2002 uh, study. And so it's been updated. Uh, some channel modification work that has been done since the, the flood that happened in 96. And so it, it's, it's different than uh, what that had looked like. Taking a look at the zoning, like I mentioned before, earlier this year, City Council had annexed and rezoned this property. Uh, it used to be agricultural forestry, which is the uh, darker shade of purple uh, surrounding the area here. This represents the area of city impact uh, boundary here to the east. Uh, the property is currently in the, the moderate density residential R2 designation, as well as uh, all these subdivisions here to the west. Uh, Mountain View Park is currently designated as Farm Ranch. You have some properties that are still in, in Latah County in the area of city impact. There's an R1 zone. You have a suburban residential in the green here. Uh, Good Samaritan Village uh, down here in the southwest corner is a, a multifamily residential zoning district. So like I mentioned, uh, the current zoning is R2. Uh, schools and churches are not permitted uses within the R2 zone. They're conditionally permitted uses, which means uh, we're here tonight for a public hearing before the Board of Adjustment uh, to mi mitigate any potential impacts of uh, those two uses. R2 zone, uh, we have a maximum building height of 30 feet. But if you go in on your side yard setbacks, which are usually a minimum of five feet with a combination of 15, so if you had five on one side, you'd need 10 on the other. Uh, if you increase that for every foot, uh, side yards are exceeded, you're able to go up a foot in elevation all the way up to 35 feet. And so uh, the, as proposed, the, uh, the, the, the buildings that are proposed are, are planning to exceed that 35-foot uh, uh, maximum building height by 11 feet, and they're, they're shown at 46 feet. So that's the, the need for the variance uh, tonight. Looking at our streets and access uh, in the area, we don't have any existing vehicular or pedestrian access to the property. Uh, it would require the extension of Mountain View Road, which is currently designated as a minor arterial in our multimodal transportation plan as well as our thoroughfare plan within the comprehensive plan. Uh, there would be required uh, some road widening on Mountain View uh, from Sloanaker Drive uh, to the new proposed roundabout at the intersection. We'll get to that a little bit later. Uh, as recommended by the engineering department in order to mitigate impacts generated by the increased traffic demand uh, as a result of this development. And the engineering department supports the construction of a roundabout at this uh, new intersection instead of a, a stop controlled uh, intersection with a light or a stop sign. And then there will be a new public street uh, from Mountain View Road, as I mentioned before, uh, heading due south along the west property line, uh, and, uh, as well as a, uh, a bridge across Paradise Creek uh, in the southwest uh, corner for pedestrian access, as well as a bridge for the, the new street. Also provides for future public right-of-way connections from Mountain View Road to F Street and eventually D Street, and that's also with it, contained within our, our multimodal transportation plan as well as the, the thoroughfare plan uh, and the 2009 comprehensive plan. Uh, the new street that will go through the property will be a, a minor arterial standards, and, and that's shown on that uh, multimodal transportation plan. There will be a southbound left-hand turn lane uh, for easier and safe access to the property. Uh, it also have two one-way private streets that circle around the school, and that's intended to, to relieve some congestion on the public street, as well as route traffic appropriately and accommodate the uh, drop-off and pickup for the school. And uh, also a sewer maintenance road is going to be extended all the way down to D Street, and that is for, uh, to maintain the, the sewer line that will need to be extended from D Street. And it also serve as a secondary access for emergency services uh, to the site. And I mentioned before, there'll be a construction of a new pedestrian bridge. Uh, it'll be in the southwest corner, which will connect to the existing Paradise Path that runs through Mountain View Park 
uh, in that uh, southern part of, of the park area. This is just a map showing our uh, thoroughfare plan. Uh, the, the solid blue lines represent minor arterial designations of current streets. So you have D Street, Mountain View Road, which are both currently designated as uh, minor arterials. F Street is currently designated as a, a collector within our, our um, thoroughfare plan, which may change with the multimodal transportation plan. I don't think it, it has it designated as a collector. And then uh, looking at uh, the dash lines, those represent future roadway alignments. So as the city grows, we need to make sure we accommodate uh, or anticipate uh, where these roadways are going to go in order to uh, have traffic directed throughout the city in a logical and efficient manner. We have uh, the blue dash line here, which represents a minor arterial. Uh, that's shown running from this uh, intersection with Mountain View Road, where it heads 90 degrees to the north and uh, shown through the property. Uh, and these are general alignments. They don't need to follow the exact dash line on the map. They're, they're, they're intended to be general uh, in order to uh, accommodate development and topography. And so those run from Mountain View, uh, eventually connect. You see the dash line here with F Street, and then it'll eventually connect down here with D Street. D Street's intended to uh, extend all the way here to the east as the city grows. Could be 50 years, uh, you know, could be longer, could be shorter, but uh, ends up eventually connecting with Robinson Park Road uh, to the due east there. Just wanted to show uh, walking routes uh, throughout this area. The, the yellow line represents a quarter mile radius from the property, uh, just to show the, the amount of students that would likely walk from uh, the certain distances. And you also have a half mile radius, uh, which, which extends all the way over to uh, Mountain View Road uh, here to the west. And there's the location of the uh, existing path, runs through Mountain View uh, Park, and this will be the location of the, the, the proposed pedestrian bridge uh, that would span Paradise Creek and access the property. To the north of your screen, uh, to, or to the, the top of your screen is north. Uh, this would be Mountain View Road. This would be the proposed roundabout. Uh, this is the plan, the site plan that was submitted for the, the school and the church property. Uh, this would be the extension of uh, the minor arterial road. Uh, you can see the, the utilities are extended all the way up from D Street, and they run, run along the, the west side of the, the property to the south. Uh, will extend all the way up to the, uh, the north property line. But we have that minor arterial street, which will extend all the way down to the south uh, to connect uh, as properties may develop to the south. We want to provide the, the street connections and utility connections in order to serve those properties as well. Uh, looking at the, the circulation of the site, these are the one-way roads. You would go in here, circul circulate throughout the site. You can choose to go through here. There's two parent drop-off locations, one in the front, one in the back of the school. Uh, this would represent the, the track and field for the school. Uh, and this would be the chapel. This would be the church building here. Uh, and just ancillary parking facilities uh, for the church and the school. This is the, the really the same view, just located north is going to be to your to your west here, to the left side of the screen. Just once again showing the roundabout and the and the, the site plan for the school. Um, you can see a little bit closer view the, the circulation, uh, left hand turn lane uh, circulation on the on the uh, on the site, as well as uh, two retention ponds. So our stormwater runoff control standards require that uh, the, the impervious surface and the increased runoff uh, not exceed the pre-development rate of the site. And so uh, that's what we do is we have uh, detention or retention ponds, and uh, those slowly uh, disperse the water into Paradise Creek. And so those have to meet all uh, City of Moscow stormwater runoff control standards. And they've, they have uh, two ponds located on, on the property. This is showing the phasing plan. So you'd have phase one. This would be all the infrastructure uh, needed for the site aside from uh, the parking lots or portions of the parking lot. You still have parking uh, here as well as uh, angled parking here. Uh, second phase would be a portion of the school building as well as the, the track and field. And then the third phase would be the auditorium and gymnasium. 
uh, as well as the, the church and the ancillary parking lot for the, the church and the school. These were the elevations that were submitted uh, for the school building, so 46 feet in height. Uh, you have the north elevation on the top of your screen, and you've got the west elevation on the, uh, the south of your screen. You have stone and brick veneer uh, that the, the building's constructed out of. Some other views to the east and to the south. I believe it was collegiate Gothic style, I think was the uh, term for the, the style of the building. Uh, this would just be a, a conceptual rendering of uh, what the building would look like, as well as a portion of the site. Uh, these were some photos that were included in the previous presentation. This would be uh, looking northeast from the <coughs> current path uh, at the location, approximate location of where the, the new pedestrian bridge would be located. Uh, this will be located uh, at the 90 degree where, where Mountain View uh, turns uh, to the north. So we'll be looking from Mountain View Park uh, to the, the east, to the northeast of the property, and to the southeast of the property. So attached to your packet, you have a, a memo from the engineering department uh, outlining some comments and concerns. Uh, regarding public streets, access, utilities, as well as some recommended conditions of approval to address those concerns. And uh, I just wanted to, to reiterate that uh, the development is going to be required to meet all applicable city code requirements uh, as it pertains to the building, such as plumbing, electrical, and fire uh, at the time of, of building permit <coughs> issuance. And in regards to the variance request, there were a couple, uh, you know, not to say that this sets a precedent, but uh, there were a couple other uh, approvals for variances throughout the city for institutional type buildings uh, to exceed the height limitation. In 2003, we had the, the Hamilton Indoor Rec Center, the HERC, which is just down the street. Uh, it's currently within a farm ranch zone. Uh, it was permitted, a variance was granted and permitted to exceed the maximum building height by 13 feet. So actually a little bit taller than the, the proposed building at 48 feet here. And then in 2005, the St. Mary's uh, School Gymnasium, which is uh, located in, in Fort Russell District on 412 North Monroe, uh, in the R2 zone, was permitted to exceed uh, the building height by approximately, it was minimal, it, it was one to two feet. Uh, and the, the rec staff's recommendations for the variance is uh, certainly to uh, base these on the relevant criteria and standards uh, for approving a variance and to approve the request for a variance for the maximum building height for the proposed school gymnasium building subject to approval of the accompanying uh, conditional use permit with no conditions. And then staff's recommendation for the conditional use permit is to consider the relevant criteria and standards uh, as well as public, public comment and testimony and uh, recommend approval for the application for the CUP for the school and the church uh, as presented at 1515 North Mountain View Road with the following conditions. And the first one being uh, that the water system be extended up to the site in a loop configuration to provide adequate fire flow, redundancy, and protection against poor water quality. The sewer system shall be extended to the site. Uh, the development shall install public streets as indicated in the adopted a multimodal transportation plan and the proposed road to the development shall be constructed to a minor arterial street standard. The proposed road shall be aligned so that a feasible connection to F Street extension uh, adjacent to the bridge can be completed in the future. Developers shall widen Mountain View Road from Sloniker Drive to the proposed intersection to a minimum width of 28 feet and that's edge of asphalt to edge of asphalt. And the developer shall build the roundabout shown on the site plan submitted for the conditional use permit uh, as opposed to a stop controlled or a signalized intersection uh, at that location. And lastly, a pedestrian bridge shown on the site plan submitted for the conditional use permit shall be constructed to provide access across Paradise Creek from the existing pathway to the site. And with that, uh, that concludes my presentation. I'd certainly uh, try to answer any questions that you might have about this. And I do <coughs> When it's time to open the public hearing, I did receive a, a number of uh, emails today. And uh, since we received those five days, uh, you're closer to f <laughs> not exceeding five days, it would be up to the discretion of the Board of Adjustment, uh, the chair, in order to accept those or not. And I would assume that 
uh, with a public hearing, we should go ahead and accept those, but it would be up to you. And I, ah, I, I printed you. those off tonight. So. Well, first of all, let's see if there are any questions for you from the board. Uh, questions? <clears throat> yeah. I have Marshall? I'll go ahead, Mike. Or Mark. No, go ahead, Marshall. Yeah. Um, Mike, could you go back to the site plan? Sure. <laughs> okay, and then the, the proposed building uh, that has the variance request, how far is it located from the uh, property line? The closest property line to the west would be Mountain View Park owned by the city. Wouldn't that be correct? Yeah, I, I believe that's stated in uh, the application. It was somewhere around uh, 250 feet. And then property to the east, uh, it would be around 500 plus feet. So it's about so you're, two, you're, 250 feet to the, uh, to the eastern edge of Mountain View Park? Yeah, to the west. Okay. And how far would it be to the property to the south, approximately? You know, I had I had those uh, numbers earlier. So, uh, school and gymnasium, 113 feet from the street right away to the west. So that's the street right away. 423 feet to the property line to the south. 511 feet to the property line to the north. 546 feet to the property line to the east. Okay, thanks, Mike. So that's the street right away to the west. So it, it's you know you have a, a rather large uh, right away to accommodate the minor arterial. Uh, so you're you're around 200 feet to Mountain View. Park. And that's all associated with the the school building itself, but not the chapel. Correct. The, Correct. The how close is the chapel? Um, certainly. Ask this, the, uh, we didn't have that since we didn't have the chapel design. That's showing now it's uh, 60 feet. 60 feet. Okay. And how does that relate to uh, the city requirements in terms of size and bulk and all of that? Um, well, it, the minimum side yard setback would be uh, five feet within this zone, so it would exceed it by 55 feet. Um, in order to go up to 35 feet in height uh, for the building, they would need to go another five feet in order to go above 30 feet. So uh, they need to be set back 10 feet in order to achieve 35 feet. Uh, they're proposing that building at 46 feet, I believe, as well. So it would have to be substantially further to the north than it shows on the site? Well, it's currently, they, they indicated that it was 60 feet away from that, that property line to the south. And so, um, we, yeah, it, it, we limit the, the height for the zone to 35 feet. That's why they're requesting the variance. Um, but, you know, I mean, if we allowed them to go all the way up to 46 feet in height, uh, the way the, the code is, is typically works is that you uh, go in a foot on your side yard setback and you're able to gain a foot in elevation. So, um, you know, if they're 11 feet short, then the setback would be required to be, uh, what, 16 feet. I'm sorry, it would have to be what? 16 feet if that was our rule, but it's not. They're requesting a variance for the height. I understand, but if we wanted to just say, you don't get the variance, you've got to play by the rules. Oh, okay. Well, it would be 35 feet, and they'd be able to go 10 feet away from that property line. Okay. okay. Now, you had a question. Oh. Do you have a, a plan that shows the location of Sloniker Street? Uh, it, it's uh, maybe I have it on my aerial here. Uh, it's where 90 uh, Mountain View makes a 90 degree turn here. This would be Sloniker. Oh. So it would be required to be widened uh, to 28 feet in width all the way from this point uh, all the way to the roundabout location. And do you know where the current uh, end of the utilities are that they will be coming from? Well, there, there's currently utilities extended to the east uh, side of F Street as well as the, the eastern portion of D Street. Uh, they'll be extended uh, for, I, I believe, for uh, in order to get gravity and not go under the, the creek. Uh, they're going to be extended all the way from D Street. Sewer. Sewer. 
Yes, Les. May, just to, to add to that, yeah, the sewer line is proposed to extend from D Street, so it's already east of the creek at that point, and then continue north uh, into the property to its north boundary to serve the site. And then uh, the water system would come off of uh, F Street at its eastern end, as well as a connection to a line that is uh, extended into the park uh, from Ford Street heading north. That would make the loop then around, around the site. Other questions? Um, anything for you, Mark? No. Uh, I have another question about the um, that uh, uh, ninety degree angle on Mountain View. Um, the the proposals and the discussion uh, that that the staff has had relates from Sloniker east. But what about that? What about that 90 degree angle? That is not a good deal on a good day. Well, I, we, as part of uh, that subdivision, they were required to install sidewalks uh, on the north side of Mountain View, uh, as well as uh, the, the widen the roadway in that area. So that's why it wasn't to the 90 degree. But uh, yeah, it would just be ex uh, proposed to be widened from Sloniker East. So otherwise, the um, uh, let's say the hypothetical school bus is cruising down Mountain View with a view to going to Logos um, and has to make that 90 degree turn. Is that the the proposed access plan right now? Correct. Okay. Thank you. Any further questions? Okay, the, the next thing that we need to do is to determine, because at the last meeting, we closed a public hearing. I didn't particularly want to do that, but I didn't prevail. And so um, uh, tonight we have to decide whether we wish to open the public hearing. And since the last meeting had about five people here, and we have a lot of people here tonight, uh, I'm anxious to know what y'all came to talk to us about. So um, uh, is there a motion to uh, reopen the public hearing? I would move to reopen the public hearing. I think it's probably a good idea based on our increased attendance tonight. Okay. Other? Uh, is there a second? I'll, I'll second it. There's a motion and a second to reopen the public hearing. All those in favor? Is there a discussion? I would be in favor of opening the public hearing, but... I think that we either need to have a time limit on there or we, that we ask the public if there has already been a view uh, brought forward to this board that we don't have 200 people say the same thing. Um, I would really like to put some restrictions on, on how we go about reopening the public hearing and accepting the testimony. Uh, Marshall, you were mayor when I was a council member, and you ran council meetings very, very fairly. And I'm going to take uh, a, a leaf out of your book. And I remember we had some very large public meetings, and you said, we will make sure that people uh, have an opportunity to speak, but they will uh, be polite and restrict their remarks to about three minutes, and they won't be repetitive, will they? And, you know, for a large part, they weren't. So I'm going to believe that we'll, we can do it that way. And if not, I have this. <laughs> so, uh, and I also have my, my stick back there. Uh, I'm well equipped tonight. So, um, is there further discussion? Okay, all those in favor of reopening the public hearing say aye. 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 Any opposed? Great, it's reopened. So, since it's reopened, I would like to hear, um, we'll, we'll do it this way. We'll take testimony in favor of the proposal, testimony opposed to the proposal, and then general testimony. And then there may be, in general testimony, some rebuttal that those in favor of the proposal would like to put before uh, the Board of Adjustment. We'll be happy to hear that as well. Um, so testimony in favor of the project, the conditional use permit request and the variance request. Is there anyone who would like to come and speak? Yes. One thing about this, there is a um, 
a sheet there that says name and address. Would you please, do you have a pencil there too? Excellent, thank you. Well, if you would be kind enough in block capitals, you all know block capitals. You know, you've gone to school, I can tell. Um, if you would do it in block capitals so that we can read this later, then that would be perfect. Thank you very much. My name is Preston Evans. I am the student body president of Logos School. I represent the 417 students of Logos School here tonight. So I don't think that anybody in this room would dispute that there is a need for a new school. But if you haven't been to Logos, you may not understand just how bad that need is. I've been attending Logos School since third grade. I remember growing up on that playground, it's an asphalt parking lot. Every time we wanted to play football, we'd come home with holes in our new khakis. Excuse me, Mr. Evans, would you address the, the issue before us? We think you need a new school too, but the question is, citing it at this particular point, and should we pass a conditional use permit, or should we pass a variance so that you can have a new school on that site? Yes, ma'am. So I'm not sure if everybody in this room understands the challenges of finding a site for a new school. There aren't many places in Moscow that you can put a new school. You need plenty of land, and you need access to things like utilities and sewers. Logos School has been looking for years. As long as I can remember, we've been looking for a spot to put a new school. And this is the first site that we found. There are all sorts of challenges, but we can overcome them, and all we need is approval from this board to go ahead and move forward this, with this project. And so we would ask that this board give its approval to give 417 students a new school so that they can have a place to learn and grow. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Evans. Um, is there anyone else who would like to speak in favor? I'm Phil Reingans. I own the property immediately south, and I'm currently building a, a house there. It's a 32-acre property, and I would, I would venture to say that the school probably impacts my property more than any other adjacent property or any other property at a distance. I would, uh, I would like to voice my support for the school being allowed to build at an increased height it, uh, it does affect our view, but in balance with all the things that need to be done, I think it's a, it's a fine site. And I think for the building to come out with aesthetic proportions, I think that the height is necessary. If you have any questions relating to how my property uh, affects the, the decision here, I'm more than happy to address those. Anyone on the board to have a question or comment? I kind of Go ahead. Comment. You know, one of the things that I wonder about, and Les, you can maybe chime in on this too, Phil, is future development and it looks like we have a, a utility easement to go to the south. Um, I would like some kind of assurance, and, and maybe you can't offer that now, that that, that may in the future be a right-of-way, a public right-of-way through there. But I don't know what your plans are. I don't have any plans to develop the site immediately, and so I, I hesitate to make commitments when I don't really have plans to do so at this point. I mean, it, but, would, it would make sense that there would be connectivity between D Street and Mountain View, particularly in light of all the traffic nightmares at McDonald Elementary. I mean, that place is a disaster. Yeah. If you go through there at 8.30 or at uh, 3.15 or t from 2.30 to 3, I mean, you're not moving. I mean, you want to talk about a traffic problem, that's it. Yeah. But, I mean, it would be nice to see some connectivity there. 
but at the same time, we don't have any plans uh, at this point that would prompt me to make commitments along those lines. Does the the easement that is being recommended that goes through a portion of your property? It, the, the easement bringing up the utilities goes entirely through my property. Yes. Okay. And and, and at this point, it's an underground utility easement. Okay. And, and we've placed it in what seems like the most logical location. Okay. And you're in the process of working out the, the actual easement wording on that. Right. We don't have a precise legal description because the, the, uh, as the design requirements uh, get made, then we can work out those details. Okay. But connectivity to D makes sense. One of the big and important parts of, of an easement is access to the utilities underground. So there would have to be access over whatever uh, distance the easement is anticipated to be. Um, do you recall how much, um, how wide that easement is supposed to be? We'll, we'll meet whatever the requirements are. I believe Mike presented, uh, Mike Ray presented that uh, that there would be some kind of a secondary access through there. Okay. I'm not I'm not addressing that. That's already been uh, uh, committed to. But as far as you know, a paved uh, arterial through there and its exact locations, mm -hmm. that part hasn't been determined. But I, underst I, I understand what I you're understand saying exactly. That too. Um, Mike, what's the the uh, width of that easement? Yeah, typically uh, for single utility easements, we require a 20-foot minimum. Uh, there would be a portion of this easement that would include both water and sewer. So in that case, we would go to at least a 30-foot minimum for that distance down to F Street where the water would head west. So that would be the minimum would be a 20-foot for, for sewer continuing on south to D Street. So uh, it could be 40 to make sure that that's you know certainly enough. something that we would have a discussion with mr. Reingens about uh, the 20 foot is our minimum uh, that's typically what we'd see for a single mm -hmm. single utility and as far as alignments you know we'd certainly look at you know in the future if there was development on the property how might roads align within the property and adjacent to the creek and then you know mm -hmm. hopefully settle on a location that makes sense uh, with that thought in mind I see Thank you. The property is 1,320 feet wide, and so for there to, for us to accommodate a 40-foot easement, or if do, in due course it had to be 50 feet, it's workable. There's, Thank you. there's plenty of space there. Okay. Thank you for your comments. Is there anyone else who would like to speak in favor of the project? Yes. My name is Darren Doan. Um, I've been living here for two years now in Moscow, Idaho. And uh, we have the property just uh, north, uh, going north on North Mountain View. And um, we are definitely in favor of it. Um, we have children who do attend Logos. Um, one thing I would like to point out, though, is um, for about that first half mile or so from what would be the proposed roundabout to where our property is, Mm -hmm. um, our property is comes right to where Mountain View then kind of starts to then go up. And I believe we have the closest house to the road on Mountain View between there and the school. And what I can tell you is living there now for two years, um, it is the Wild West right there. <laughs> Average speed, 85, easily. Now, I know you could say, well, we could just solve that with a, a sign something of that nature. No. I know um, what you, you can solve it with, but uh, <laughs> we probably shouldn't talk about that. Sure. Um, but I think there are more natural ways in which you can actually begin to solve those problems, and that's when things become a little more civilized. And I love the idea of um, something happening. You know, Obviously, I want the school there. I think it's fantastic. Um, I love growth. I think it's a great thing. Um, I moved from California to here, uh, not to escape, you know, being overcrowded, but to actually be with people who are doing great things and actually growing, just growing this, this town. 
Um, but something there, I think, from a traffic standpoint, actually would be a huge benefit to get some sort of life out there where people don't just think. I mean, I was there right when the car went all the way through. I don't know if you were aware of that, but they say it was 110 miles an hour. didn't make that turn and just went straight into Mountain View Park. Um, people do it every single day. I mean, dozens and dozens and dozens. So I think it actually you know, would also just help bring some stability in that area and I just wanted to ask you 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 had asked about the uh, the bus uh, yeah, the question. I, I, I would just curious I wanted to ask what your uh, what your thought was on that and why why the question was asked it's it's irrelevant to okay. uh, to your testimony okay so you talk to us okay because buses are all already come down there all day long I just didn't know if you were aware of that so buses are making that turn all day long and are already on that um, trajectory so thank you is there anyone else who would like to <clears throat> uh, put testimony in favor of the project on the record? <clears throat> yes. My name is Darrell Paul. I live out about a mile past the proposed site at uh, 2350 Trail Road. I need to apologize too, Darren, because I was one of those kids that had the quarter mile. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know. <laughs> <laughs> that was a couple years ago. <clears throat> anyway, I um, want to speak in favor of the school. Um, that proposed site is being purchased from the trail property, and I had the privilege of farming that ground for many years. And before that, my uncle farmed for many, many years. And um, I understand there might be a problem with um, low ground issues. And I just wanted to put in a word for that, that I farmed through everything. It was all farm ground. Nothing was left behind. I farmed every inch of that. And there is a spring out there, and cattails grown there now, but for many, many, many years it was farmed through. Um, thank you. Thank you very much. Other comments in favor of the project? <laughs> yes. As a calligrapher, you could always use italic. We have a calligrapher in the house, but I can't do it. <laughs> uh, I'm John Carnahan. I'm the activities director at Logos School. And regarding the gymnasium, we hope to host uh, district and even state tournaments uh, at the site. We've been in the last four years admitted into the Idaho High School Activities Association as full members. We were associate members for 20 some years. But we're in the White Pine League. We, we want to host um, first class events uh, at the school and it requires the height that we're asking. Thank you. Thank you. Other comments in favor of this project? Go. Yes, come right up. Good evening. I'm Carl Berglund. Uh, I have kids that have gone to Logos for the last 10 years. I, uh, as I understand the, uh, please jump in and correct me if I'm wrong, the, the reason that we have uh, imposed 
uh, height restrictions on buildings is one to uh, keep from blocking other people's views and two from just having uh, eyesore skyscrapers growing up in the middle of our communities is that correct yes okay so I would submit that uh, that uh, this proposed development does not meet any of those criteria for the reason that we would impose those restrictions what well, looks like a very uh, well uh, constructed a well-designed and uh, well-thought-out project uh, as Mr. Carnahan uh, mentioned the gym does have to be the height uh, that's required or requested to host those kinds of events and uh, if we build the church and the rest of the building smaller it's going to actually be more of an eyesore than it would if we had everything the same height so I would just ask the board to consider that that's all I have thank you any other comments in favor of the project Good evening. My name is Caroline Nelson Troy, and I'm um, a state representative from District 5. And I'd like to commend the city on their efforts to prepare for this project. I spent some time during the session helping write a letter of support in order to uh, seek some funds from a Tiger grant to uh, put walkways and bicycle paths out through that area to make for a safe pedestrian path. And I think that um, this project embraces the values of our city um, in education and diversity. My children went to St. Mary's School um, and, and to the public schools here. I think it brings a richness to our community. And so I wanted to speak in favor of the project. Thank you. Thank you. Do you have any questions? No. Any questions? Uh, other comments in favor of the project? Yes in the back. Way in the back. <laughs> and then the second row from the back. Um, I'll just be real brief. Um, our kids have gone to Logos the last five years. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm Kirsten Miller. I live in Moscow. And uh, my daughters, one graduated from Logos last year and one uh, two years ago. And they were both high school athletes. They did basketball, track, volleyball. And I, they played in gyms where the ceiling is not the proper height. And it's just very unpleasant it causes interruptions in the games and I just like to see a proper gym built with the right size ceiling so I think that is relevant to asking for the variance thank you, thank you. and uh, the gentleman in the back do you, did you want to speak okay we're all right yes Larry Stevenson, Superintendent Logos School. Real quickly, because I know I don't have uh, much time, the Logos School has done its due diligence. We've met with city officials, county officials, the State Department of Environmental Quality, State Department of Environmental Quality, and the traffic engineer, and explored the viability of this project. We ordered a topo survey. We had a wet, wetland survey done, and, and all of those all, every meeting we had and all of the studies we had said these 30 acres were appropriate for a school. When our research was complete, we paid cash for the property after our due diligence was done. Logos School has been transparent through this whole process, providing feedback and comments from, from those at each, each session. Here are some issues that are, that are very important. Erosion. Our landscape plan that we have with two ponds with seed and sod. If you see that whole area of fields, most of that property is going to be seed and sodded fields. We believe there are some, some minor wetland issues that our expert 
um, told us, Shelly Gilmore, our wetlands expert, expert, that will be easily mitigated with moving some modification of elevation of the dirt. So with swells and berms and with the ponds, we can easily take care of those issues. So we believe that our landscape plan with our siding and with our ponds is a better, better, is much better erosion plan than what currently is on the property. So we've improved that. Wildlife, some of our families have said, well, what about the wildlife? Well, with our landscape plan, we've got trees growing through the front, 20 foot of buffers around each, each side of that, of that property. And then, and then with the ponds, we believe there'll be more pheasants, more ducks and more geese than they are now. Trees, we, we love the trees going across the, the southern boundary property. I'm uh, the western boundary property that the city has put there. We love those trees. We don't want them to go. So we're not cutting down those trees. Matter of fact, our, our landscape plan calls for boulevard trees going on both sides of the road going through the western side of the property. So those will be hornbeams, columnar maples, and oaks, 40 to 60 feet tall. So we'll add trees, and more trees around the outside, more birds. We love trees. The view, the height variance. If you go from the corner of the building, the southwest corner of the building, and you draw a line straight down to the nearest, nearest neighbor on Ford Street, is 540 feet. 540 feet. 540 feet from that corner to the nearest opposing neighbor for 11 foot variance. Trigonometry, if you do a little trig, I'm a math major, if you do a little trig from 540 feet from a six foot tall person and you take 35 feet and you elevate it 11 more feet from 540 feet it is three quarters of an inch. Three quarters of an inch. Site plan. We're asking for three quarters of an inch for the site plan. Site plan view. Now, the trees, our trees we put in, and the trees that the city already has on there, they will block already, at, at, if they get 20 feet to 30 feet on that site plan, they'll block a complete view of the school. The complete view. So please, pass the CUP and give us three quarters of an inch. I have a question for you, uh, <clears throat> Mr. Stevenson. Uh, your um, uh, student body president, Mr. Evans, said that you've looked everywhere for possible sites. Did you look at the Thompson property um, across Highway 8 and essentially across from the, uh, um, the cemetery? Yes, ma'am, we did. And was that n unacceptable? Yes, ma'am, it was. Why? For safety reasons. Safety reasons. You ever driven off a state highway and try to turn a right uh, to, to a school? A state yeah. highway pulled into a school? Uh, not there. You couldn't pull into the school. Tell, give there, me an example of a state highway Excuse you drove me. into uh, to a school. Mr. Stevenson, mm -hmm. I don't want to argue with you about, Ask the question, what, I'm answering. about the site that would work or not, but... Mm -hmm. It would seem to me that that the access to that site would not be off the state highway. It would be off the interior roads adjacent to. The I agree state with highway. you, but the Thompsons said we could not come. They would not sell us that property if we come anywhere else except off State Highway Eight. Oh, that that would do it then. You're yes, quite right. You're quite right. <laughs> you Thank got you. me. We did, and let no. me go on. We looked at every possible site. I met with the city. I met with the county. I met with. Uh, with uh, private uh, property owners, and we appealed, please consider mm -hmm. Logos School for that property. In the county, in the city, and they looked at the properties, they said, that spot, that spot is the best spot. And by God's grace, the trails came to us and said they'd be willing to sell it to us. Don't take it away from us. Well, it's not my problem. <laughs> It's our problem and your problem. Thank you for speaking with us tonight. Is there anyone else who would like to speak in favor of this project? Last call for those in favor. Anyone else? Any, one last one. 
Actually, we have time. We'll take more. just like to say that uh, I believe tell us your name sorry, and address please Daniel Anderson I live here in Moscow thank you um, I'd just like to say that the uh, the proposed building architecture I think would add significantly to the appeal of the neighborhood as well as the fact of having so many options for the kids in those developments as the city expands will uh, increase the property values of those neighborhoods which is good for everyone. Um, additionally, with the traffic concerns, I would just like to say that I think a school zone there uh, would help significantly with uh, um, helping people to keep in mind that there are other people in that area um, and keeping in mind safety first, that they need to go slower through that area. And also the roundabout, I believe, would help as well. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Anderson. Anyone else wish to speak in favor of the project? Okay, let's turn our attention to those who oppose the project. Is there anyone who would like to speak in opposition? Um, someone over here? Go right ahead. And please write your name and address on the uh, sheet there. Block capitals. Or a nice italic hand. My name is Eric Nelson. I live on Darby Road, uh, upstream of the proposed project. Uh, and the proposed uh, roundabout uh, dr access drives and bridges are all built uh, in the floodplain area of Paradise Creek, as far as I can tell. Uh, so this, as they're built up, this will narrow the area that the stream can flood into. Uh, the current plans control and mitigate water, uh, flow of water from the property into the stream, but they don't do anything about the narrowed floodplain. Uh, therefore, more water will, by necessity, back up and spread out over the banks upstream more often. Uh, that's where I live. Uh, this goes somewhat against the stipulation to not alter stream flow upstream or downstream as required by the development plan. So that, that would be my objections to this plan. Thank you very much for your comment. Next person speaking in opposition. because any of you who know me know that I can run off at the mouth really fast uh, and, and say more, and so this keeps me to say would you, would you? I'm sorry, Janice Willard. Um, I live um, on Darby Road. I brought you guys some audio visuals here. Uh, these are some photographs, and I can, I can equate you to where these were taken, but these are some photographs of the uh, floodplain uh, while it was flooding. Um, here, so I'll take a look at it and I can come back and tell you where those were actually. Let me ask first, are these all the same photograph or different scenes or? Those are six different photographs all taken on March 30th, 2012 of um, the, the stream flooding. One of them was taken on my property, one was taken from Darby Road and all the rest of them are of this property. Thank you very much. Um, so, um, I live 
on Darby Road, and I have a significant portion of Paradise Creek floodplain on my property, uh, just upstream of this building site. Uh, I am a biologist. Um, you mentioned being a mathematician. I'm a biologist. I have lived on this property since 1983, and as a trained biologist, I have observed the patterns of nature. Uh, rather than discrete events, like like an engineer, I, I have a tendency to look at, at broad and um, interconnected events. So I have spent 33 years living on and watching this stream as it floods. First of all, I think it's incorrect to just consider issues relating to the 100-year flood. I know that this is what planners do um, all the time, but the reason why I think this is incorrect is because natural flooding on this stream, stream is not a discrete event. This is not a flood on this stream. There are usual multiple floods in years that are conducive to flooding. The stream growing and releasing in multitudinous um, uh, conditions and a lot of interacting conditions. Um, including how much rain, how saturated is the ground, whether the rain event uh, coincided with a snowmelt event, which th then gives more rainwater on the ground because it doesn't soak into the ground because it's still frozen. Um, and when conditions are right, there is filling of that flood lane repeatedly. It ebbs and flows throughout a long time period. I have seen that floodplain flooding um, occurring in every month of the year from January to May in the time that I have lived there. Those pictures are from just a minor flood event. I've seen much larger ones than those. Um, it, this unpredictability is likely increasing because there have been alterations in climate patterns. We're seeing more unpredictable fires, for example, and our ability to predict extreme weather events is becoming increasingly challenged. Uh, the nature of our soil and our farming practices also um, means that Paradise Creek doesn't just fill with water when it floods, it also fills with a great deal of silt. Um, in a fluid dynamic situation, anything that disturbs the flow causes the, the, the silt to, to drop out of there. And I have seen fence posts um, buried by six inches of silt in a single flood event um, out on my stretch of floodplain. So the purpose of a floodplain is to allow the expansion of water in high water um, events and to reduce the water velocity down stream to recharge the water table, reduce the presence of all this silt. So I have real problems with this plan uh, when it looks like they're going to be putting the main access road, a bridge, and the roundabout, which is the primary transportation corridor for everybody north of this, um, into that floodplain. Um, I can't tell you how much from watching my 33 years of watching the flooding in this area that I think that this is really a foolhardy idea. Um, I don't understand how you can build a, round, a roundabout in the floodplain that is big enough to handle the combines that constantly come through there in the summertime and at the same time be able to not significantly alter the stream practices or create a situation where that roundabout then, if it's in the street, in the floodplain, then becomes flooded, not allowing uh, emergency vehicles to get through to the people living north of there. Uh, so this is one of, um, and you'll not only have a roadway full of water, but full of mud and silt as well, because every time you flood, you, you end up with lots and lots of stuff. Um, the other thing that I want to address is safety concerns. Um, I'm, I'm very concerned about the safety concerns in that area, uh, and I was when, when the previous idea of putting a, a a, um, a, a school in that area was discussed because I drive in that area all of the time. I see the, the fast speeding cars out on that area. I, I also know that Moscow um, uh, Mountain View Road in that vicinity is a place where you find lots of bikers and walkers and people pushing strollers and walking dogs. Um, it concerns me greatly that you have a plan to put in a road but provide no bike or bike access or, or um, um, uh, cross or walkways for children there. You're going to be putting children out here. And it really worries me that this is not a safe location for any of the children that are going to be going to schools on that north end of town there. So you have McDonald School, you have Lena Whitmore School, you have uh, the Charter School, and you have the, the, um, the Middle School. And they are all 
serviced by little tiny arterials, D and F and B Street and then Mountain View Street and the children are all going back and forth across those streets and they're all doing it at the time that school is trying to get out and you're talking about adding an additional four to five hundred children coming down that road that already can't handle the children that are on it now. It's, I, I just worry that children are going to be killed it's, it's just not a safe situation out there to be putting ch that many children out on that corner of town with the poor infrastructure that we have in terms of roads, fast roads on Mountain View, which, we, which is in the county, so we don't have, uh, we don't have police keeping the, the cars going slowly there. And then anybody who's been by D Street at the time that uh, school is, is going in session or out of session can tell you how incredibly congested that is now and now you want to increase that by a third. So m my biggest concern is safety issues and my second biggest concern are the environmental issues dealing with, with um, inadequately dealing with all of the issues with this floodplain. I've lived on this floodplain for 33 years and <laughs> It can be really dicey, and I think that I think that it really needs to be given more consideration than it's been. This is a reason why. Ms. Willard, do you want to wrap it up? Please? Yes, I will. Uh, I, th we, we we went through all of these issues when they looked at putting a school out here the last time, and uh, they haven't changed. If it, it, the, the traffic is still dangerous, the floodplain is still there. Thank you very much. Is there anyone else who would like to speak in opposition to this proposal? Right over there. Thank you. Uh, my name is Diane Baumgart and I live in Moscow. And um, I, I would like to commend the people for the plan, the beauty, and the transparency that has gone on to date. I think that's applaudable. My concern, um, my primary concern, because um, I hope safety issues can be solved. So that leaves me with my primary concerns, which is the wetlands. Um, the Plus area was a land of mountains, trees, and wetlands. Ninety percent of our wetlands have disappeared, and that was over 20 years ago. Um, the statement in the um, ordinance uh, variation request for the ceiling increase for the gym um, is actually, to me, a testament to th that there's a water problem out there. Um, the water table is high, and the water table is high for a reason. It's a floodplain. Unless there's an environmental impact statement, we can't really determine, although it was stated in the report that this is not an adjudi adjudicated wetland. It very well may be, but if no one has gone out there and determined whether it meets the three characteristics of a wetland, hydrology, plants, and soil type, we really don't know what kind of a wetland it is. And without knowing that, going forward would put us in an interesting situation of destroying another wetland, putting a very large, although beautiful structure, a much needed structure, on an area which may not really serve the structure and that purpose very well. Uh, I concur with other people about the impacts of living on a water plain, <laughs> flooding. Um, the Palouse River runs, is not just a local Latah County stream. It, is a, it runs into the state of Washington. So there's some issues there too. What I would like to propose is that a full environmental impact statement be done before we have to make the determination of whether or not this project should go forward. 
there's so many critical issues, both to the structure of the building, the long-term stability of it, and the consequences of building on a floodplain and not acknowledging that you have a adjudicated wetland and bypassing permit issues, which are fairly serious to me. On another note, um, I've been in education for 35 years. I've served on the facilities committee for Moscow School District and many other school districts, and I can attest, at least in Moscow, and concur that it is very difficult to find a building site for a school the size of this, whether it's a middle school or a high school or a K through 8 school. It's a tough situation. There's always issues that come up, but one issue, which is the wetlands, is an issue that really is not within our provenance to change, and this idea that you mitigate a wetland by moving earth around is, is really not a solve. There are four different phases for how you deal with the wetland, and they are very clear in terms of how it should be done. And the very last one, which takes an incredible amount of discussion and permit and agreement across many federal agencies, is mitigation. And that's rarely approved, although in this case it may be approved. So that's it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Is there anyone else who would like to speak in opposition? Yes, in the back. So my name is Sean Ringo, um, long time Moscow resident. And um, I'll certainly echo the floodplain concerns, but not as much because of ducks and geese and salamanders and everything else, but because um, we've done a lot of work mitigating that high flood response um, with Mountain View Park, for one, um, with I think it's what, Carol Ryrie Brink, is that it? the other one, that um, provide the Paradise Creek floodplain more capacity to absorb high water events. We've um, improved some of the bridges in town to make them more accommodating of ice when it builds up so we're not backing up water behind them. Um, this effort has gone a long way towards uh, um, potentially um, reducing the area impact of our 100-year flood and reducing people's insurance rates in town, how much money they have to pay so they're no longer having to pay flood insurance, um, making it so businesses in town don't have to elevate their new construction up above the floodplain when they build. And so it's done a lot to improve Moscow's opportunity for development within our central business district, which is something a lot of us have worked for a long time to accomplish. And so I'd hate to see this jeopardized by um, not giving due upstream considerations. Um, also, having grown up out that way, you know, I know the Bennetts are still logging on the mountain. I know there's a good number of people that are still farming out past, you know, further north on Mountain View Road, and they use that as a conduit to get their grain into town <coughs> or their lumber out to the mill, right? And I'm not so sure that roundabout is a good fix for grain trucks as big as they've gotten today because a lot of them are pulling doubles anymore, or at least a, a full-size grain truck and a double behind it. And I see that as being challenging. Um, and finally, I'm concerned about the infrastructure. Um, uh, who's paying to extend the infrastructure to the construction site, um, to the new site? Um, obviously, once it's there, it's going to be public and the city's going to have to maintain it. <laughs> And we've got plenty of aging infrastructure already in town. And that was unfortunately very evident as I went to drive down here, down B Street, 
we're also doing some great work around town, and I appreciate your guys' efforts there. But um, those are my concerns in a nutshell. Thanks a lot for your time. Thank you very much. Is there anyone else who would like to speak in opposition? Yes. Hello, I'll be brief. Would you write your name and address? I will. Thank you. David Hall, 1334 Wallen Road. Um, my main concerns are wetlands and floodplain, <coughs> transportation safety capacity, and somewhat the visual. Excuse me. Um, I'm with the Palouse Prairie Foundation, and lots of people are now starting to know that more than estimated 99% of the original Palouse Prairie is gone. Uh, it's not as well known that 97% of the wetlands in the Palouse are gone due to farming and construction. That number coming from the Idaho Department of Fish and Game publication. Um, like Diane Baumgart said, I'm concerned about building in the floodplain and losing the wetlands and whether it would be required to go to the Army Corps of Engineers to get a Clean Water Act permit before they could do any construction. I'd like to know. I would think they would like to know whether they will be shut down and fined if they do wetlands destruction without getting a permit. I think they want to know ahead. Um, I live east of there and numerous years roads are closed because of flooding and big chunks of ice and everything and it can definitely be an issue. Um, for the transportation safety, again, having a lot more students out there and a lot of traffic and and capacity for all the extra traffic there and after school sports driving in with the sun in your eyes. I don't know. It sounded like there weren't going to be any separate walking paths, so it would be dangerous. Again, if you're driving into town in the evening, the sun can be straight in your eyes, often coming from the Easter towns. So that's a concern. And then the extra height of the building. There are very few places in town where you can see either Paradise Ridge or Moscow Mountain and be ashamed to to block it again if it's possible to keep keep buildings low. Um, I think it was about 10 years ago Moscow School District was considering putting a school out there and it was determined to be unsuitable at that time and I think it's an unsuitable place for another school at the same position now. Thank you. Thank you very much for your comments. Is there anyone else who would like to speak in opposition to this proposal? Yes. Can you hear me if I, if I talk this loud? You are doing a fine job. Thank you very okay. much. Okay. My name is Ross Coates, and uh, I live here in Moscow. I'm retired from the art department at Washington State University, where I taught for many years. And uh, when I got finished teaching, we sort of decided that it was nice Pullman, Moscow, nice area. So we bought a house and we've been living here for many years. Uh, first of all, let me say 
I'm charmed by all the little children that are that are here. I thought that was very cool that you brought them all. I'm not sure what they're what they're learning, except that when you have a crowded room, you have to sit on the floor. But uh, anyway, maybe it's a good thing for them to listen to all this. I don't have one big giant objection to this. I. It's more that I'm sitting at an unfamiliar table and there's little plates with things in them and I'm taking nibbles and some are nice but there's other nibbles that sort of taste bad and I don't want them. And so the idea of having a walk along the creek uh, well, I should tell you probably that we live on uh, uh, 8244 on Ford Street, so we're right on the edge of what is now a walk, but will be, if this goes through, a road. And now when we sit in our backyard and look out, we see elderly people because at the end of, uh, of, of the walk, there is a retirement home, and the elderly people get to walk quietly without motorcycles and jeeps and everything else. Uh, there are little kids learning, learning how to ride their bike without having to worry about somebody in a car coming, coming around the corner and uh, put a tire, putting a tire print up their back. So that's all kind of nice stuff. I, I understand the Logos people wanting more space, but it may be that we're in a situation where you can't get more space just because you got the money. You have to think about uh, what you can share with other groups. Uh, just up the street uh, from that river on uh, F Street, there is uh, high school, grade school, uh, what else? Uh, charter school. There's a big swimming pool, a big arena, and uh, it's really tough at the, when school is finished, when all the, all the parents come to pick up all their cute little kids. Man, it is murder. You, you just stack up in all directions, and it's not very, it's not very pleasant. So I also worry about uh, the water thing that several people have been talking about, about the wetlands. One of the things that we always liked when we uh, moved here uh, was the geese coming. At that time, uh, there were fewer uh, uh, houses and so we got coyotes sometimes at night. Mr. Coates, I am so sorry to interrupt you. I'm going over my five minutes? Well, you're, it was supposed to be three, but yes, you are. Three minutes? Uh, but it's okay, just very, very quickly, I think that we can think about ways to get all this stuff without destroying the landscape. And I'll tell you one more thing. I'm a real believer in in the wetlands because about the second or third year we moved here, uh, some snow melted, and uh, we woke up in the morning, and there was a big piece of ice that was this big and this big and this big that had come down the mountain, come down the creek, missed the turn, and gone through our chain link fence. It, so I thought, well, that's you have to you have to give uh, 
Give the ice. Uh, congratulations for doing it. So anyway, I would just say, think about this. Don't just say, we got the money, we can do it, because there's all kinds of little things can happen, and you can end up with something that will be useful and, pl and pleasing and pleasant, and ever for not only these charming little kids with the nights on, but elderly people, you can do it. But uh, you have to be willing to pick up the little thing that's on the uh, on the table, take a bite, and even if it's a little hard, maybe you got to swallow it sometimes. That's that's all I have to say. Thank you very much. Is there anyone else who would like to speak in opposition to this? Yes. Hi, my name is Dan Bradway, and I've lived on B Street for about 26 years now. Um, I have a good friend who was city planner up in Sandpoint before I moved down here, and also county planner. And before he arrived there, it was more like not the planning and zoning commission, but the commission of acquiescence. Anybody with money could get what they wanted, regardless of floodplains, traffic flows, anything like that. And now, he, excuse me for I'm not saying that you're doing that here. Well, I, I understand that I, I don't feel that you are, but would you address the issue in front of us? The All right. I'm rate what I'm, what my point is, is that use permits. this is a planning and zoning issue. And if you just acquiesce, then that's not really planning and zoning. Everyone in this room knows that D Street and Mountain View are crazy and have been getting crazier for years and years. And it's not just at 8 in the morning and 3 in the afternoon when school opens and closes. On my way here, there were soccer games, there's baseball games, we've got new fields, lacrosse going on, we've got the swimming center, and there's tons of people, hundreds of people a day go by my house out on Paradise Creek Trail, there's kids learning to ride their bikes, there's people jogging and walking their dog, and it's a wonderful place out there. Um, this school is going to negatively impact our way of living, everyone who lives out there. When I come home from work, it's close to 6 o'clock usually, and D Street is nuts at that time of day because of all of the there's a skateboard park, there's baseball, there's all kinds of things. When I came over here, there was, it was crazy at that time. I'm afraid I'm going to hit some kid on a skateboard zooming out in front of me, and you're just going to make it a lot worse by acquiescing to this request, is what I'm saying. Um, it's already bad. The city knows it's bad. Uh, several years ago, the city tried uh, to put a road through 3rd Street to go through to Mountain View to make it a little better. I don't know. I wasn't at those meetings. Um, that was rejected because of homeowners complaining. I understand, but D Street has so much pressure on it right now, and D and Mountain View are horrible. And I think everybody in this room knows that. If you don't know it, then go drive it sometime and see. Um, do you have any, excuse me for interrupting, but do you have any observations for how you might address that so that this school could be built? I think that if you put a road through on D, I mean from uh, on 3rd Street, if you put that all the way through, it would help. Because so. let's, let's keep to this point. So, um, so if, if you're planning it and zoning it, that's a plan you could make. Um, is to put third through because right now the traffic issue, D Street has way too much pressure on it for the street that it is. So, Do you have anything about this particular plan that you would like to add? Um, well, this I'm worried about the flood zone thing too because when you alter streams. And, um, and that's been addressed. That's been addressed. Okay, yeah. So. Thank you very much for okay. your comments. Is there anyone else who would like to speak in opposition? Yes.
I'm Sonia Lewis, and I've lived in Moscow for about 25 years. But this is just an observation that applies um, all across our country and, and the world, for that matter. And maybe it's already been mentioned, but out in the hall, it's hard to hear everything. Um, weather has become more extreme and is harder to predict. And so I think that, that uh, the chance of unpredicted flooding on Paradise Creek is, is greater than it has been in the past, even if our overall precipitation is lower. So that might be something to consider. Thank you very much. Is there anything further uh, that anyone would like to offer in opposition to this proposal? Yes. My name is Leslie Baker, and I live in Moscow. Uh, traffic safety has been brought up a good bit already, but there's a specific point I'd like to raise that hasn't been. My daughter attends Moscow Charter School, and in order to walk to and from school, she crosses Mountain View Street at F. As I'm sure you're aware, there's no stop sign. At, at F Mountain Street. View and D? F. There's a stop at, sign at D. Oh, yes. There is okay. no stop sign at F. And my understanding is the city is not uh, willing to stop traffic on Mountain View at F Street. Not only my daughter, but a lot of other Moscow Charter School students and a lot of Moscow Middle School students cross Mountain View at F Street every day, as well as quite a few uh, just residents and I think university students who cross to take to the bus stop there. Uh, it is a dangerous intersection and the traffic on Mountain View is very bad about stopping for pedestrians. My, <coughs> excuse me, sorry. My daughter was nearly run down this past school year in that intersection crossing Mountain View by a school bus, can no you, less. Can you link this so, up to this particular proposal? My concern is that we've just been told there are 417 students who will be going to the school, many of whom will be routed up Mountain View Street, possibly coming down F. I don't know, or down D, but the cars turning are not really a whole lot better for crossing pedestrians than the cars that are going straight through. We've also heard that they hope to have large athletic events that would presumably be an awful lot more buses and cars. And because access to the site from the highway would require those buses and cars coming through town, uh, most of those will be routed up Mountain View as well. And so you're looking at a significant addition to the traffic going up the street, uh, particularly at that intersection where an awful lot of children cross. Now I have to say I love living in Moscow where we can let our kids walk to school by themselves and feel like they're safe. And so I think the city needs to make sure it considers the safety of those children who are crossing there. Thank you very much for your comments. Thank you. Is there anything further uh, in opposition to this proposal, especially something we haven't heard before? Come right on up. Thank you, Madam Chairman and ladies and gentlemen, board members. My name is Tony Driver. I live at 2322 Concord. My property abuts Mountain View Park, and I thank you for the privilege to have addressed you previously at last month's hearing. I promise I will not repeat myself, and uh, I will not add much to what has already been testified here in opposition to this proposal with just a couple of comments I think that have not been aired adequately. First, uh, Madam Chairman, I would uh, like to ask you, um, addressing the board, to please ask the applicant if they have filed Nationwide Permit 39 uh, as a requirement for a um, institutional development, which 
Would you say that again? Yes. I would uh, ask you to please ask the applicant. I've learned that's the proper procedure <laughs> to ask you to ask the applicant if they have filed nationwide permit 39 with the, I think, the, um, the uh, appropriate places with the Army Corps of Engineers. But I may not be right there. But I do know that the permit application is required. And, and I want that to please be in our minutes. Thank you. Um, examples of institutional developments for nationwide permit 39 include schools, government office buildings, etc., and churches. Uh, finally, um, I think it is relevant and important to remind the board and those in attendance that in 2005, the uh, Moscow School District did present a proposed levy to the city for the uh, for to build a high school on exactly the same property in question tonight. The only difference is that in 2005, that was a public uh, undertaking and the city was informed adequately and there was tremendous debate. Uh, the difference is that this is a private undertaking and the, uh, the statute only requires that those who are properties abutting or in the vicinity of the development be informed. And so, I'm really happy that many people have turned out now and who are aware of what's happening. In 2005, the foundational debate uh, issues are exactly those that were are being presented here tonight. They are no different. The only thing that has changed from 2005 to now is that students have increased in number, uh, automobiles have increased in number, and the city did put a four-way stop sign at D Street. That's the only change in my observation that has occurred. Finally, I have confidence in our city's ordinances regarding subdivisions and developments that the full cost of site development, sewer, water, drainage, access, etc., cetera, uh, will be provided by Logos. As you know, the site is very low in elevation and the mean water level of Paradise Creek, so there's an obvious risk of future impacts that may have to be shouldered by the greater community downstream literally, literally and figuratively. And uh, examples of that are um, the possibility of mortgage lenders requiring homeowners adjacent to Paradise Creek to provide flood insurance because the 1% floodplain changes, uh, possibility of lift stations, pumping stations to move sewage from low level to higher levels uh, for, proper th for proper flow through our sanitation system, as well as increased pressure or head of water to provide adequate pressure for potable water to reach the site and its neighbors. All of these are unforeseen improvements and a good example of an unforeseen improvement that may have to be shouldered by our community is the improvement of Mountain View Road from just north of of public, north of the aquatic center where public street intersects Mountain View Road going north around a 90 degree turn turning east intersecting with the improvement that was provided by the Sloniker development. That area will have to be improved in future. There's absolutely no doubt about that if 417 students are using that as primary access. I also have observed in the site plan that the uh, logo school plan is to widen and improve Mountain View Road from asphalt edge to asphalt edge, but there have been no mention of sidewalks or bicycle access lanes or anything of that nature. And those, in my personal opinion, should, if approved, should continue all the way around to intersect those on Mountain View Road that's going from north to south in the vicinity of public and the aquatic center. As you know, Logo School, as well as the Moscow School District, are exempt from property and income tax. That is why the argument that I presented was one of the foundational arguments in the debate in 2005 that resulted overwhelmingly in the defeat of that proposal by 56% of the voters in the city voting no. Any unforeseen consequences not specifically addressed in the conditional use permit will fall on the city. I believe it is too great a risk to allow that possibility. Finally, I wish Logo School well in their efforts to build a new school. God knows they need a new school. And I think every person in our community knows Logos needs a new school. 
Logos is a shining example of what makes Moscow great. And I would not want to deny the students and the people that support that institution the right to have such a shining example of an educational institution in our community. I think the site under consideration, however, is highly inappropriate for a school. The greater populace said so in 2005 by overwhelming majority. The plan was bad in 2005, and it's a bad plan today as well. Thank you very much. Thank you for your testimony. Is there anyone else who would like to speak in opposition to this proposal? Yes. Hello, my name is Daryl Faircloth. I live at 818 Ford Street. I don't want to steal the pen. And I always come here, and I'm wondering if we could create a new category called neutral, but um, I'm just going to make a couple comments. One, I was at the last meeting. The way it closed, there were going to be no more public comments, and then this readjourned tonight, so this caught me off guard. I don't have notes. So I'm just going to make a couple comments. Um, I have stuff on record um, from the previous meetings. Um, I am one of those FEMA insurance owners. My wife and I paid money to get a certificate of elevation to reduce our um, flood insurance costs. I put 12 inches of gravel in my crawl space of my house that took uh, me and my kids running a little snow sled and all that kind of stuff so hopefully whatever happens on this site doesn't impact us negatively down the line in terms of that and it's a and it's a real situation it was a four hundred dollar difference a year may not seem a lot to a lot of people um in regards to the site and everything um going back to tony's comments when the moscow high school um levy was out the school was placed much further northeast and the fields and stuff were down more south. And, and this is a newer uh, just observation going back to my recollection, um, which kind of complements the existing fields at Mountain View Park, you know. So hopefully um, all options are open in terms of their design. I think it's great um, going to the height variance. Um, pitched roofs are going to cost you know, more height, flat roofs, and uh, always an, an option. And there are beautiful classical buildings around the nation, the world, that have flat roofs. So hopefully that might take things in consideration in reducing the roof line. And uh, gymnasiums, auditoriums, chapels, I can understand that. Uh, I do have an architecture background. Um, those need to be a little bit higher pitches, you know, classroom levels. There's a lot of space there. Could that be, you know, classroom areas, just one level? I get it creates a little bit more foundation, things like that. Uh, just things to be taken into consideration. The traffic thing's a huge thing. Mountain View Road on that dog leg. There's a lot of people that walk that every morning with their pets, with their bicyclist I think we've, we've just come, the development come and all that so I haven't heard, I got here late I got here earlier and I didn't realize there were gonna be so many people and so I hadn't heard anything on the height restriction or the height variance since I've been here so I don't know if that's been addressed tonight so it was pretty well okay so that's all my comments thank you very much for doing that uh, is there anyone else who would like to speak in opposition yes My name is Marilyn Coates, and I live on Ford Street. And uh, again, with Daryl, we're neighbors with Daryl, and I, I'm doing a neutral thing here because I really wish Logos the best. I, I believe 
in education and children, and I'm an artist. So last time, I don't know if you remember that I, I talked about Gothic and, and that you're in a beautiful landscape and, and the design. I have a question. Are all the roofs 48 feet? Can you answer that, gentlemen? 46 feet. 46, but everything is 46 feet because of the gymnasium having to be 46 feet? Correct. Okay. And that's my biggest concern right there is uh, I know that we're talking aesthetics, and it's I guess maybe it's beauty is in the eye of the beholder, but having an artist's background, I don't have a problem if this goes through that just the gymnasium uh, has that that variance, but that the school is designed uh, not to that spec, so that you have a flat line. It's almost like the Great Wall of China is going to be out there, everything the same height. And, and aesthetically, I don't find that as interesting. And with my art background, MFA, and I've taught all over the United States. So um, are you, you're the architect, correct? <laughs> oh, and I don't, I don't mean to dis anything, but I'm just bringing that into consideration that all the roofs do not have to be 46 feet. Okay. Oh, and also the flood is serious uh, with the change and what's going to happen over there. Uh, in the floods of the, the mid-90s, uh, the water did go that direction, and I'm afraid that if with the building over there, that the water's going to come towards our direction. And because it's fields, uh, it, it was able to assume, it was able to encompass the water, and the water came up to my knees outside my gate. So it didn't quite get to uh, us, but it is expensive with the flood insurance and the guarantee that that will not happen. Thank you. Thank you very much. Is there anyone else who would like to testify against this pro proposal? Last one? Second to last one. And please, we're now getting to some, some honest-to-God repetition here, and I would appreciate it if we could keep it to new information and to three minutes or less. My name is Jean Elliott. I am actually a resident of the Midwest, but my family has lived in this county for over 40 years. One thing that hasn't been mentioned, um, in Iowa where I'm a, my uh, residence is, in the areas around interchanges and where there's land that is uh, apparently not uh, suitable for farmland or any development, uh, there have been ponds built and trees and habitat. And I've noticed and often thought for many years, it's kind of sad, there are, I've noticed there are many dead animals on the roads. So they get drawn in by the water, because it's, you know, in the dry seasons, the habitat, the food, and then as they try to make their way back to wherever they live or wherever they're going, they get hit on the roads. And so I can see, this is the first time I've ever mentioned this publicly to anyone, but I, back there I kind of wish the Department of Transportation would think about what they're doing to the wildlife. I don't know the numbers, I don't know what solutions there could be, but, you know, How animals this, get drawn excuse in. Me. Ms. Elliott, how does this relate directly to this project? What would you like to see happen? Well, um, I don't know. I've, I've wondered whether there could be underpasses under roads to help the wildlife. I, as I picture this correctly, the park is um, to the east. Is that right? And there will be these ponds over on this side. Um, if there could be some... Uh, Trans, um, pa uh, let's see, I'm having hormones to my forebrain. <laughs> um, under passes or something under this, there's going to be a lot of traffic, and I, I think we can predict that the, if animals are 
going to be living there near those ponds because of the activity and the noise and everything. I kind of doubt that there'll be too many there, but they will get drawn to the water in the dry seasons, especially. Well, thank you for and, your comment. And uh, so I just thought I would mention that, but I am not against the school. Okay, I, it's on I, the record. Okay, we appreciate thank that. Thank you. Is there one last or any additional comments? Are there any additional comments against the proposal? Okay, let's turn to the idea of those who are who wish to either rebut or to have additional non-specific testimony. Is there any rebuttal? Yeah, I'm Scott Becker with uh, Hodge and Associates, 405 South Washington Street. It seems like uh, the the issues tonight really uh, circulated around floodplain, wetlands, uh, transportation safety, uh, the height of the school, and possibly what uh, what the the reason for Moscow School District not choosing that property. So I think the we'll just kind of go through that list real quick. Uh, we did some research to go back and see why, uh, you know, what the opposition was to that property when the Moscow School District was looking at it, and it really looks to me like, from everything that was printed, it was it had to do with financial. Uh, there was no mention of environmental in any of the the issues that we we looked at. So, I think uh, fin you know, I think that kind of tosses that out as as an actual argument. Uh, when we get to the floodplain. Uh, yes, there will be a bridge there, and yes, the bridge will pass the 100-year flood plus additional space above that without rising the floodplain above or below the stream. Um, we do modeling in our office for floodplains, and we have to get this through the Corps of Engineers and other departments' uh, approval and through the local floodplain administrators also, so it would... Since this is on that fringe of the, the cusp of the county and the city, both the county and the city floodplain coordinators will be reviewing our work to, to, uh, to ensure that that's, that's what we're designing. Um, the, height, the height issue, uh, I think Larry uh, explained that very well. It's, it's really an insignificant issue at any distance from a residence in this area. You know, at 540 feet, you really you're not blocking a view at that point. It's you're you're looking over that. It, it's it's ultimately insignificant. Um, the floodplain, uh, Shelley, are you here tonight? Uh, could you come up? I've got the I've got Shelley Gilmore's floodplain maps. Uh, she's done the the floodplain study. We've looked at the floodplain maps. Let's see if I can bring those up. Press escape, Scott. Escape, Scott. Okay. So we've we've identified the floodplains in the area. Um, we haven't uh, we haven't gone so far as to how we're going to mitigate all those. Part of it is is how we laid out the the school and the property to uh, to avoid as much floodplain disturbance as possible. Uh, I mean yeah, wetlands. I'm sorry. To. I'm sorry. Thank you, Shelley. Uh, so it's the wetlands. Actually, uh, Ms. Gilmore, if you wish to be part of the testimony, you need to come up. Yeah. So, so we're going to work closely uh, with our with our wetland specialist and uh, and work through these issues. Obviously, where the bridge goes, there's uh, some minor disturbances to wetlands. That's a standard practice uh, for every bridge that that gets put in it seems like the the bridges are expanded or uh or wide the roads are widened when the bridge goes in so it does get into the floodplain issue i mean the wetland issue and so we work with the corps of engineers we work with our uh, wetland specialist and we will address that all of those issues um as far as uh, nationwide permit 39 uh we have not applied for any of the permits right now. We don't have the, the grading permit. We don't have a building permit. Uh, we haven't applied for uh, the 404 permit. 
uh, it seems like we would be getting ourselves ahead of ahead of the game here. Uh, ultimately, tonight we're looking for the conditional use permit, and that we're looking for a, a height variance. Uh, once we get through that hurdle, then we go to the next steps uh, through development and and the permits that we need for that. So uh, it seems like yes, we, there is a number of permits we need, and we agree we're not you know we're not trying to avoid getting permits, but but until we know that. What we can build out there, it's pretty hard to tell somebody else what we're going to build out there. Okay. Does that conclude your comment? Yes. Uh, so if you have I, any questions. Uh, you didn't really address transportation safety as okay. one of your comments. Yes. Okay. So the transportation safety, uh, we're constructing an arterial street on that uh, site. Uh, so the transportation on the site is, is addressed. We're widening Mountain View. Uh, I believe it's 1,300 feet, 1,100 feet, something like that. Um, we're also working with plan, uh, uh, Public Works to to monitor the issue and uh, implement any suggestions that they may have as we go through the process. Does anyone here have a question for uh, Scott? I have two, actually. <laughs> what? Um, what are you going to how how do you deal with that uh, uh, roundabout and the the issue of um, uh, truck transportation and all of that that's an excellent question and uh, if you look at all roundabouts uh, you have the the traffic lane where the cars go if you look on the inside of that there's a concrete apron that concrete apron is designed to be driven on by larger vehicles uh, combines trucks with trailers uh, that's not an area that's that's intended to be free of traffic it's actually intended to take the the over traffic um, we just were up in Spokane this weekend took the new north-south freeway from the north to the south when it ends and you come off of that there's a series of two roundabouts right there and that would be approximately the size of this roundabout uh, and and that's in a in a zone where truck traffic is intense and what about um, uh, bike lanes and sidewalks along the Mountain View part that is proposed to be constructed under this uh, plan? Along Mountain View Park? Or I, I'm sorry, Mountain View Road. <coughs> the uh, um, the along that that stretch of uh, uh, of Mountain View. And we'll work with Public Works to address the the proper way whether we uh, want to identify a, a bicycle lane. Uh, or do sharrows, uh, do do a walk, whatever, uh, you know, with Public Works input, we will work through that to, to so make the safest un issue. So it's unre unrelated to your proposal right now? It, it's not unrelated, it's just not uh, designed at this time. Okay. Uh, Does anybody else want to ask a question? Um, I do. Um, your retention ponds, are I'm obviously not a no, that's fine. pro in that, but um, those are designed to help um, prevent flooding, right, into the floodplain. And I don't know if you want to address that yeah. since that was such a Let big concern. Let me address that. Uh, generally in town, uh, we design detention ponds which uh, uh, retain, you know, hold back the water and release it at a rate that uh, is at a pre-development rate. The, d the ponds on this site are, we anticipate uh, retaining additional water and try to capture that water and use it for uh, future irrigation. So our ultimate goal is to, uh, number one, if, if the ponds are full, release only at a rate that, that would be, uh, you know, at pre-development rate. But number two, actually capture additional water, which would, would be a net benefit to the floodplain. Anything else? Thank you very much. Yep. Is there any other rebuttal testimony or additional non-specific testimony? Yes. This is Mr. Hey, Stevenson, this is, right? Yes, this is Dr. Larry Stevenson. Yes. Uh, Scott, do you, uh, can you put the landscape plan up? Absolutely. There was, there was uh, a couple of questions about walking paths and, uh, and ability for children to walk on the path and for citizens and senior citizens to walk on the path. And 
we, we value that. This is our landscape plan with the trees going around the campus and putting in. As you come across, what we want, we have asked the city to allow us to help them from where the walking path ends on Mountain View Park as it goes over the bridge going to the dog park to be able to extend that walking path up and cross the road of, of our development and connect as a walking path that we're going to put on the property going by both of the ponds and coming around into the, into the, uh, the track uh, area and back around and back to the church and take the sidewalks and come back out to the pedestrian path. So we're going to extend that walking path at our own price and all of the utilities that are going on, all of the roads, all of the spreading of the roads, Logos School will be paying for. So we're going to extend. If you take, it's a quarter mile by a quarter mile and close to a quarter mile, so it's almost a mile all the way around that. So for our neighbors, they'll be able to have a nice walking path to be extending, extended through our properties. Now, it's twofold. It's for our neighbors. It's also for our cross-country team to be able to run along that path and be able to use it in order to be able to prepare for cross-country events because currently now if you go to a street you, and you go to our property there isn't any paths there isn't any place for our kids to go so traffic so traffic what i did if i may is a big issue i took the demographics of all the families and the teachers of logos school and i put them in the in the county in, uh, in the city map where these families actually live and so this red line right here down the middle shows east and west. And here's Logos School right here currently. You notice there's not any families even in close proximity to the school currently. This is west. West is where all the families are. There's only 12%. Actually, that's east. I'm sorry, east. There's only 12% of our families that live on the east side of the town. Oh, I'm sorry, the west side. <laughs> I'm sorry. I know and off is this way. <laughs> so, the west side. So, now, it, what I did is I took the time, mathematically, to figure out the distance of each of these families drives now to that property we currently are at. Then I took the distance from every family driving to the new school. It'll be a savings of 20 miles each time. So 20 miles in the morning, 20 miles in the afternoon, that's 40 miles less of travel congestion to the city of Moscow by Logos School being in this spot as opposed to that spot. Well, 40 miles a day may not seem like a lot. 100 days is 4,000. Mr. 4, Stevenson, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but it doesn't relate to the issue in front of us, the conditional use permit and the variance. And I'm sorry it doesn't. It's interesting information. And I am Does glad that you did traffic, that. To traffic flow or congestion of traffic on Mountain View. Does it not relate to that? I don't think it does, no. I think that what uh, and, and frankly, I'd like to be able to um, uh, conclude this hearing before I qualify for more Social Security. And <laughs> so if you would uh, wrap your comments up, sure. I'd really appreciate it. Sure. So for traffic flow, for traffic issues on Mountain View, if you take a segregate intersection on Mountain View and you would, would look at that two little intersections and you would say the traffic flow, what does it look like? I would say that it will increase, okay? But if you take the aggregate of all the intersections that go to west this way and congestion, and congestion that occurs, that actuality traffic flow decreases with this new site as opposed to the old, old site. So it decreases thousands of miles. So the, the last thing is that we, as far as widening the road in Mount View, we have not told the city at any point, any, at any time, that we won't put a bike path or a sidewalk on there. We haven't. And so we have not. And we have said from the very beginning, we first of all and foremost are about safety of all of our children, not just the children at Logos School, and that, that we won't compromise that. So our promise to, to our citizens and our neighbors is that we stand committed to putting the best way to get to that school 
for our children because our families drive every day with our kids. They don't take school buses. Thank you for your comments. Any further comments in rebuttal to any of the testimony that you heard this evening? Yes. My name is Rudy Olson. I'm with uh, Design West Architects, and I've lived in Moscow gee, I, 60 years. Um, <clears throat> I, I'd just like to have a couple comments about the the height variance. Um, is one of, of the obvious is the the aesthetic that we'd like to achieve. Um, not all the roof lines will be at 46 feet. There's multiple dormers coming out. Um, we, we want the, the academic portion to be two stories, uh, uh, making a, if, if we were to make it one story, then that is a, a wider uh, footprint and contributes to more uh, impervious surfaces. Um, uh, besides the aesthetic, um, we, we'd like the, the attic to house a mechanical mezzanine so you can get all your equipment inside and uh, really don't like putting it outside and flat roofs it yes you can make they make pretty good flat roofs now or low slope roofs but um, they can still turn into swimming pools and um, we we want to avoid that um, we have taller ceilings in there for uh, kids today in classrooms we like to we like to pop up the ceilings as high as we can like the, this room has a fairly high ceiling and you know like they did in in these days with uh, more daylighting, uh, taller windows. Um, and, and so that's, that's pretty much what I'll have to say about the, uh, the height variance. Um, the, the side, I, I think it's a, I actually think the roundabout and putting the development out there is uh, gonna be more traffic calming than uh, I think an earlier speaker noted that, that uh, I think it'll actually calm traffic. Um, yes, there'll be an increase, but uh, of volume. But eventually, those connector roads will come through. Um, you know, you, you've already got all those other schools and and all of that out there. Um, I think with this site on that on the street that Logos builds across their property, everything does go off site and happen off site. Even the turn lane there, um, I. I, I think it'll work uh, just fine. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Olson. Is there any last comment? Oh, there is a last comment. Did you speak in favor or opposed, or what? what's the nature of your comment? comment? I beg your pardon? I'm going to make a general comment. Or okay, a, that's quite all right. Uh, one thing I just think that hasn't been addressed. My name is Jerry Hudak. I live in Moscow. And I think just one thing that hasn't been addressed is the community members that use Mountain View Park. A lot of people use that park for soccer games, activities, picnics. Their view is definitely going to be affected. So they don't have that distance from the school. So I think to be a good neighbor and to give back to the community, if there's just some way you could design this, so your gymnasium is 46 feet, but maybe not the whole thing. So people can still enjoy the beautiful view out there. Thank you. Thank you very much. I think that we've had, we've heard from everyone for, against, and question mark. I appreciate the um, politeness and the, the um, kind way that you listen to everyone. I really uh, was glad to be able to uh, deal with this. I will ask the board if you would like a few minutes and maybe five minute break or shall we just go right ahead? What is your will? I don't need a break. There is a desire for a five minute break. We will be back at 915 and at that time we will deliberate 
there will be no more. I will actually, the hearing is closed. Um, the, uh, we will reconvene at 9.15, and we will uh, decide what to do about this application. So take five. Where are you? Find my other escaped members. And, and uh, unfortunately, we can't just take volunteers from the audience. You know, come on, come on up. Maybe we could auction off the positions. <laughs> That's how we're going to deal with Mountain View problems. Oh, come on. Would, would you find, Les, would you go get the boys? I apologize for this little delay. Mm. Oh, that's where you were. <laughs> okay, we're back in in session and um we have a few emails that we need to have read into the record. Sure. First one is uh, from Diane Walker. I want, to, I want to go on record in opposition to approving the upcoming zoning change for the new Logos School proposal on Mountain View Road. D Street, my main access to most of Moscow, is already congested at peak travel times and doesn't need additional traffic. This traffic will also be going to St. Mary's and St. Rose's, as well as the middle school and several parks and rec facilities. Many children are traveling on these streets. Logos is not a neighborhood school, so it could be located anywhere in town, more particularly in a high-density section, either towards the west or south of Moscow, using roads that are already developed to handle heavier traffic. Additionally, the impact of the proposed building on our green space would be great. It would change the entire character of Mountain View Park and the surrounding area. These green spaces are one of the characteristics of Moscow that make it appealing to people interested in living here. It would impact the way Moscow markets itself to future businesses, employers, and employees. Long-term financial impact in, on the city could occur. Thank you for your consideration. Diane Walker, 833 North Cleveland. Uh, th this next one's from Dan Bradway, uh, and it was uh, 
appears to be the, a copy of the, the article that was submitted in the letter to the editor, I believe, in today's Daily News. Uh, regarding a proposed very large school and church on Mountain View Road, the proposed site is not well served by existing streets and the amount of increased traffic is a danger to public health and safety. D Street is the only through street on the north side of town providing access to Mountain View Road. I have seen D Street and Mountain View traffic increase to near dangerous levels already. More than 1,100 students and teachers travel via D Street to McDonald's School, Moscow Junior High, St. Mary's School, and Lena Whitmore School every day. The adjacent baseball fields, soccer cross fields, tennis courts, track, swimming pool, park, skate park, and Paradise Creek Trail attract hundreds more vehicles, bikes, and pedestrians. At peak, both streets are a madhouse. The proposed school would add 520 students and 75 staff traveling these two streets at peak times. Approving this would recklessly endangering would be recklessly endangering all children and parents who drive, walk, and bicycle through the already congested mess. Peak times are not limited to school start and end times, but include large sporting events and would include church events if the variance goes through. The Moscow Planning Department already recognized this problem and tried to improve traffic by proposing an extension of 3rd Street so that it would connect to Mountain View. Some homeowners on 3rd Street impacted by this complained and were able to stop the project. In 2005, and the same property was proposed as a site for New Moscow High School. Uh, there were many citizen concerns about this site for a school, mainly about wetlands, environmental impact, infrastructure, and road access. Largely due to these concerns, the high school level failed, despite the land being offered for free. All of these concerns are even more important today due to growth of the area. We wish Logos School well in finding a new site, but we feel strongly that the site east of Mountain View Park is not appropriate building site for the large project. Dan Bradway and Tony Driver. And uh, I, I received one for Tony and Connie Driver, who had already submitted testimony. I don't know if you want me to read that as well, Tony, or? No, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, no, you don't, do not have to read it. Okay. Uh, next one's from Deborah McKinnon. I'm writing to oppose location, uh, a school and additional housing on the site near Mountain View Park. The traffic impact will make Mountain View even more congested and dangerous than it is at this time. Mountain View has limited access to through streets causing congestion, as does the location of the junior high, playing fields, fairgrounds, swimming pool. This places children in danger as there is heavy foot bike traffic in the area already. I'm also concerned about the increase in taxes that will play, be places on the Moscow homeowners. It is my understanding that the new infrastructure required will be for a church school. I believe churches do not have the same tax responsibilities as the secular community. I oppose this development. Deborah McKinnon. Next one's from Don and Judy Adams, 128 North Mountain View Road. Don and I oppose the very large school and church on Mountain View Road. It is not well served by the current streets and will be an albatross before this is all said and done. We are disappointed to see that 3rd Street has been blocked from being extended to Mountain View. Please, please act prudently when considering this future development. Uh, this next one's from Dottie Dozier. Uh, hello, Mike. My husband and I have lived on the corner of Blaine and B Street since 1971, and we have been regular users of Mountain View Park and the walkways there since the late 1980s. Now in our 70s, we drive there to let our dogs play in the field, usually avoiding the time kids are getting out of school. As you know, D Street at Mountain View is already congested mess around 3.15 p.m. during the school year. In a way, F Street at Mountain View is even scarier with kids darting across Mountain View between moving vehicles. Picture this in winter with ice on the roads. I was just lucky skidding to a stop just in time. How exactly does the city propose to handle another 500 students at these intersections? My husband and I are strongly opposed to any school going in next to Mountain View Park. Thanks for reading. P.S. The south end of the field at Mountain View Park is a wetland. Late fall, winter, spring till June, it never drains. Trust me. Uh, the last one here is from Diane Walker, uh, 833 North Cleveland. I thought we heard I think we Diane. already seen that one. Okay, I got it. Okay. And that's it. Well, ladies and gentlemen of the board, what do you wish to do? We have 
two items before us, the conditional use permit and the variance. Should we take the conditional use permit first? What's your w pleasure? Yes, Marshall? I guess listening to all the testimony and listening to all the issues, pro and con, but I guess I'd like to put a little perspective on it also. Um, right now, the property has been rezoned to an R2 zone. And if we look at what would be permitted in the R2 zone without a conditional use permit, but by use of right, we could be looking at a, a 30 acre subdivision of single family homes. And we could look at the, the number of traffic that 30 homes would generate, or, or excuse me, 120 single family homes on 30 acres. If we look at the amount of traffic that 120 homes would generate and the amount of asphalt and roof structures, um, those could be there without a, without a conditional use permit. Had the property not been rezoned R2 and would have remained ag forestry, we look at the, the types of uses that would be allowed there without a conditional use permit. I and mean, we could have grain silos, we could have chicken farms, we could have dairy farms, we could have a, a sawmill with no height restrictions whatsoever. There are no height restrictions. So, but that isn't what we have. It has been rezoned to the R2. So we could have 120 single family homes in this R2 zone and they could, if, if the backyards abutted the property lines, then they could go as high as 35 feet. And so I, I think with, with perspective of what we're considering the conditional use permit used for with what it could be used for without a conditional use permit, I think that's important. We've heard a lot of issues about traffic, and, and those are concerns to me, too. I've lived on Mountain View for over 30 years now, and I see the traffic, the increased traffic that has been generated. But I'm not so sure that it's totally a Logos school problem. I think it's a city problem. I think it's a county problem. We look at all the new homes that have been built in the northeast sector of, of Moscow. And it is important that, that we have roads to accommodate these. I, 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 you know, heard that there's no stop sign in F Street. I've got to negotiate that every day, and and I hope that it's something the city looks very seriously about. Um, the intersection of of Tatuna and Slonaker in Mountain View with that 90 degree turn. We're, I mean, if we're adding more county residents out there, and we're going to add add school residents out there. At some point, I think the city needs to redesign that intersection. But I'm not so sure it's a Logos school problem. I think it's a community problem that we need to address. Um, the next issue that we need to look at is is the uh, the, vari the height variance. And like I said, if it was uh, an ag forestry zone, there would be no height limitations whatsoever there. Um, I don't think that the height variance is is a big issue. I think that the conditional use permit is where the issue lies. And without the conditional use permit, then the, the height variance goes away. Okay. Um, uh, any other general comments about the, the application in front of us from the board? No, okay. What's your pleasure, ladies and gentlemen? <clears throat> Well, I uh, have sat on this board for a number of years, and uh, I recall, and I say this pretty, with some regularity, I recall some training we received, and the theory behind a conditional use permit is if it meets the applicable uh, relevant criteria and standards, it's something that ought to be approved. Uh, variance is a little bit more tricky, uh, and Jerry's not here tonight, but... Uh, it's okay, you've got two... I'll, I'll, I'll well, channel. I'll channel. I'll channel, channel little Jerry, and and I I I know that Jerry is a vociferous opponent of variances. I don't know that I've been here with him where he has uh, felt the need to approve one. So why don't you talk about the conditional? I use will. Permit, my then? my point is this: uh, when we're talking about the conditional use permit, um, you know, if if it meets it, I think we need to look strongly at approving it. Uh, and I think that's where 
that's where. So if we can make it work, uh, I think we ought to. Okay. Uh, Mark, comments? Um, I guess the comment I have is I propose we take the first issue on the the variance and start discussing it. Instead of the conditional use permit. I mean, that's, pardon me, the conditional use. Okay, and uh, Madam Chair. any questions or Madam comments? Chair. No, thank you. Okay, well then let's take. Lynn. Madam right. Chair. Yes. I think we're, we're, we're going to need to address the variance first because one of the criteria for uh, approval of a conditional use permit is that it meets all applicable development standards okay. of the zoning code. So um, right now it's above the, the height ex, you know, allowance, so we'll need to address the variance okay, first. Okay, so we'll take the variance first then. Okay, what's the pleasure? Uh, I would accept a motion either to uh, accept the proposal or deny the proposal of the variance. One. Yes. I'd move uh, approval of the variance uh, with no conditions. Okay. There's a motion. A second. And there is a motion and a second. Discussion. Oh, come on. There's got to be some discussion <laughs> here. After all this, this good testimony. Um, I'm, I'm well, happy. again, I'd like to put some perspective on it that, that we're looking at an 11 foot variance and that the distance from the property lines is is considerable not only is it is one of the closest property lines the the uh, mountain view park but the distance to the to the neighbors is even further than that we've also heard testimony from the furthest neighbor south and he uh was um had no problem with with the variance so um, to me, it's the 11 foot variance is, is very small and negotiable. I'll, I'll add to Marshall's. I found compelling the activities requiring a regulation height. Jim, I thought that was important. And also, I think it's Dr. Stevenson who indicated we're really talking about a three quarters inch difference when you're looking at it. So I, those are persuasive persuasive arguments to me. Unfortunately, uh, Mark, I wasn't able to uh, confirm that calculation, and I'm not <laughs> going to buy into that without that, that confirmation. Uh, the other thing is that I think that the, the issue is not, uh, can you see the darn thing from uh, 600 feet away? It's what is that height going to do to place that kind of blockage, if you will, on that site for the people who use the park, the people who drive around there, the uh, people who uh, have vistas and views already over that field area. Concern that I have is the same thing I had when we, as I, when I was on the council and had to deal with the issue of the St. Mary's roof. And the, that roof, was one where they were able, they didn't like it, but they were able to adjust it so that they dug a little further down. The problem that we have with this site is the very high water table doesn't really permit that. And that's why I'm, I just have some real doubts as to whether this is the, the, the best correct site uh, for this place, but that's the prob that's the issue that's in front of us, and those are my views about it. And it's I'm only one of five. Uh, Mark, your comments I on this motion? Yeah, I don't have huge objection to the uh, height extension. I think a number of its issues have been addressed, and those are that. Uh, there are going to be trees, uh, buffer trees, that are much taller than the building. that are planted along the uh, west side between the building and the park. Um, that uh, the uh, most of the landscape issues, I think, work well with the uh, the structure of the building and. I don't think 11 feet is a uh, too large of a issue in the scale of this project. 
Annette, your comments? Um, as far as your concern about your comments on the the variance, what are your views and what do you think? Well, that you can't go lower because of the water plane and um, so you need to go higher. I'm I don't think the forty six foot height is um, gonna really cause a big issue with the view or um, but uh, going back to the that if this gets approved and Logos needs to go and get the permit number 39, I don't remember what exactly what it was called, uh, then those are the further steps that, that they need to take to get approved for um, their wetland issues. Well, that will, I think we'll, we'll be dealing with that primarily when we, when we address the uh, uh, conditional use yes. permit. Yes. Is that, am I on the right, uh, uh, any wetlands issues would be dealt with with the conditional use permit and not the variance? Correct. Thank you. Yeah, so, Thank you. so I am hang fine. on for that one. Okay. I believe that the 11 feet addition to 35 feet is okay. acceptable. Is there anything else that anybody wants to bring up about this motion? Or are you ready to vote? You ready to vote? Ready to vote. Okay, Annette? Yes. Aye or nay on the motion? The motion is, I'll just restate the motion. The motion is to approve uh, the variance requesting the 11 foot um, uh, accommodation on this site. Uh, is there anything else we should put in the motion? Uh, you can either include the relevant criteria and standards now. There's some sample Later. language, or we could do it as a Later. second motion. Okay. Later. Okay. I you know what the motion is. Yes, I. Okay. Aye. Two eyes. Aye. Aye. And a nay. Four to one. Um, we'll address. Uh, do you want to address the uh, criteria and standards now? Yeah, gentlemen, mm -hmm. ladies. I think so, um, and I'll take us. I, I, I don't have a problem with the criteria, uh, relevant criteria and standards as proposed by staff. I think uh, when we're talking about number one, which is are there special conditions or circumstances that exist which are peculiar to the property, such as size, shape, topography, location, which are not applicable to other properties similarly situated in the same zoning district. I think one of the things that we could <laughs> add to that would be. And you brought it up later, the idea of, you know, St. Mary's was able to go lower. We can't do that here. Uh, and I think the high water table uh, could be classified as a special condition or circumstance that, that we could consider in, uh, in the relevant criteria and standards in this particular case to satisfy number one. Otherwise, I, I, I don't have any issue with, uh, with those that have been proposed by staff. So is your motion? I will uh, put that in the form of a motion. I, I propose that we adopt the relevant criteria and standards proposed by staff with the addition to number one. Uh, one of the special conditions is the high water table. Um, I'll trust Anne can get that in there. Uh, and then we adopt two and three as, as uh, stated. I second. Okay. It's been moved and seconded. Is there discussion? Well, I have to say that I'm concerned because let's say <coughs> that uh, Logos takes its uh, plan to uh, the um, oh, the Corps of Engineers and whoever else issues number 39. Uh, <laughs> reminds me of something like um, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy in number 42. We're going to all go there. home and Google permit 39 tonight. That's it. <laughs> That's, That's it. Where go exactly. To. Uh, but anyway, if if they're out there and they get the, this permit and they said the folks who are <clears throat> at the the federal level look at this this site and they say, oh no, it's it's like a sponge out there. You can't do it. Then it won't and, happen. Pardon me. Then it won't happen. It won't happen. No, it's going to be re reviewed. The the flood issues will be reviewed by county staff and city staff. And if it doesn't meet the the standards, then it won't happen. 
It won't happen, be meaning the project won't happen. Right. I see. Okay, then I don't have to say anything about that. Okay, anything further that you'd like to discuss about the proposed uh, relevant criteria and standards statement? Okay, you've heard the motion. No one needs to hear the motion again. Aye. Marshall? Aye. 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 And nay. So let's move to the, that passes, the, uh, the variance is done. Let's go to the conditional use permit. Now the conditional use permit has a lot more detail to it um, involving, um, well, just a lot more detail. We'll start uh, with the, uh, uh, what the, the board wishes to, to do on behalf of this uh, application. Approve, disapprove, amplify the conditions. I think you're going to help by putting the, the conditional use permit options up there. Mike, am, am I imagining your intention? I I can do whatever you want. Do you want the criteria that you need to approve one, or do you want our recommended conditions? Uh, uh, no, I, the, the criteria that we have to, to deal with. So looking at those uh, criteria and standards, what is your pleasure? And it's clear that number one, yes, it's a conditionally permitted use. Now let's take a look at, is it in harmony with the neighborhood and surrounding land uses? Comments? I think it is. Tell us why. <laughs> I, you know, I'm sitting here reviewing the uh, proposed criteria as uh, presented by staff, and it says it will be in harmony with the neighborhood and surrounding uses. The proposed large open spaces, play areas, sports fields, and parking will be congruent with the public park to the west and agricultural fields to the northeast and south. Uh, the school building will be a traditional brick schoolhouse designed with Gothic trimming similar in scope and style to that of the University of Idaho's administration building. Um, I, I think it fits. Okay, any comments? I agree. You're in concurrence. Annette likes it. Um, How about Mark? Well, it's sort of an odd place to see uh, a university uh, uh, Gothic building. But, uh, I mean... It doesn't fit very well in the neighborhood, well, if you want my candid opinion. It's not an agricultural uh, uh, type or of Or even a, a park-like yeah. uh, building that is similar to um, those kinds of things that you see in the residential area surrounding it. That's true. But also uh, to be uh, considered is the fact that they are doing a, a very nice landscape proposal on it and assuming that it meets the uh, article 39 um, that could work um, as well the uh, alternate that was suggested as a possibility uh, logos could sell this property to a developer and put 120 houses on it uh, given a choice of living in the neighborhood, I think I would rather see a screened Gothic building with uh, natural trees uh, to a developed landscape of housing and backyards and fences. 
Well, I have been impressed, actually, with the willingness or the expressed willingness of the administrator of the, the school to say, we want to <laughs> be a good neighbor. We want to have uh, cooperative uh, use of facilities and those kinds of things. It's certain that Logos has been um, in the cooperation business because of its facility now with the University of Idaho and with the city and with others. And uh, so if we know that that uh, spirit of cooperation will continue, that gives me some, uh, some area of, uh, of positive uh, note about that. I think that that has, um, that has some appeal. Um, moving further along, unless anybody wishes to uh, contribute more to number two. Well, and I, I'll... There's no place inside the city to do this. So any school that is put up new is going to be out there. It's going to be out in a field someplace. Uh, and you brought it up, for example, uh, the field that's, a, I think, is across from the cemetery yeah, on the Troy yeah. Highway. Um, I assure you that we would be having the same discussions. We would be having the same concerns. We would be having the same side issues, uh, looking to the south, looking to the east. So to me, that's really a non-issue because space-wise, it's going to happen. If it's happening, it's going to happen out there someplace, and, and a piece of farmland is going to go by the wayside uh, either what's well, going to have to be because there's just no place inside here to really do it. So um, so I wanted to add that because I think I, when we're talking about will a Gothic building fit out there, well, I am hard-pressed to think that any building would match the wheat fields and such that we have out there, but... Uh. Well, to tell you the absolute truth, I think I can think of some architects who might be available for the job, <laughs> but we couldn't afford them. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Uh, so, so. The, um, uh, so if we move from there um, to the uh, proposed use as approved um, to, to uh, number three, um, would it be injurious or detrimental to adjoining properties or the neighborhood? Now, the concern that's that the big causes yeah that's the one that that's the well, one that it's one of the biggies here, yeah. and I'm concerned about the potential for uh, flooding and the potential for other um, uh, other activities because of wetlands and uh, creek movement and, and that kind of thing. It is a wet place out there. There's no doubt about that. Uh, so what would the group like to do? Well, I, I think through the permitting process, all those things will be looked at. They have to meet the, the Army Corps of Engineers criteria. They have to meet the county's criteria. They have to meet the city's criteria. And they will be required to get all the permits necessary to do, have all the engineering studies done, and anything that they need to do to remedy those flooding situations, they will be required to do. So I th believe that those problems will be remedied uh, through the permitting process. Mark? You know, I, I, I agree with that. I think the Kind of the elephant in the room here on this one relates to the traffic and the increased traffic. And you know, I, I have kids that go to McDonald's. Kind of in the next one. Yeah. Well, and, and that we, we talk about is it is it a nuisance? Is it detrimental? Um, noise, dust, glare, vibration, odors, some things like that. Maybe don't necessarily no, apply. Really, will the location um, be served adequately by existing streets? Number four. Okay. I. It, yeah, I, I see what you're saying, Linda. But I, you know, I, I, I think Marshall. When we're talking about safety, when we're talking about traffic. That was the overarching safety concern I heard was traffic and and kids crossing the street and things like that. Um, okay. Again, I, th I think Marshall's point is well taken, which is by right we could have 120 single-family homes, uh, each with two cars coming and going at all times, and I. I I, I don't know that that's a Logos problem. Uh, I think that's an expansion problem, and, and I, Marshall, your, your comments there are persuasive to me that, that uh, um, 
excuse me, Mark, but what, what would you think of, of requiring an environmental impact statement that would, would show this? Because right now we have assertions that, oh, yeah, we'll take care of it. But my biggest concern is the traffic, and I think we could possibly add a condition when we get to relevant criteria number four. I think we could add a condition uh, if we're going to move towards approval that we might be able to address some of the traffic problems. Okay, well what about the, what about the issue of um, wetlands and uh, the impact on um, just basically water and the uh, uh, floodplain and that kind of thing? Would an environmental impact statement be a reasonable thing to request of the applicant so that they could actually show what the probable consequences of this this development as proposed would be I, th I think that's part of the process already isn't it Scott when when you develop this that's part of the process anyway isn't it Mike hey, I Mike? guess the question would be why would we we be treating this property any differently than any other property in town so we've adopted uh, flood hazard area standards to regulate the floodplain, and so that was just ha that just was updated last year. So FEMA uh, works closely with us through the National Flood Insurance Program. Uh, this w ordinance was completely rewritten last year to their current standards, and so uh, if you look at uh, you know what's going to happen with the bridge work, because that's the only aspect of the project that's going to be in the 100-year floodplain or the floodway. So the rest of the property is out of the 100-year floodplain. So if you look at uh, our under underneath our floodplain section, uh, the requirements that uh, uh, a project in the regulatory floodway must undergo an encroachment review to determine its effect on flood flows. An encroachment analysis must include a determination and documentation that the filling, grading, and construction will not obstruct flood flows and will not cause an increase in flood heights upstream or adjacent to the project site. B determination and documentation that grading, excavation, channel improvements, bridge, and culvert replacements that remove an obstruction do not cause increases in downstream flood flows, and a certification and documentation by a licensed professional engineer that the project will not result in a rise in flood heights. So that's required as part of our ordinance for any property that develops in the floodway in the city of Moscow. Mike, my concern is that what I heard from citizens tonight and in the uh, uh, about a month ago, uh, what I heard was concern about whether the hundred year flood way or that that number was the right area to be concerned with, or was it really the five hundred year area because this is a very sensitive area of the community. Well, the 100-year floodplain is the only floodplain we go off of. 500-year, we still have it mapped, and it only extends a very short distance away from the 100-year floodplain okay. in this area. So, um, you know, the, the photos that were submitted of that area are consistent with what the 100-year floodplain is mapped at, at, you know, in that vicinity. Okay. So I don't have any concerns with that. All right. Marshall? Well, and they've, they've hired Shelly Gilmore to, uh, to address the wetlands issues. Uh, any mitigation that's necessary. I'm sure they'll follow her recommendations. They have to follow all the, the Clean Water Act, the storm water regulations that with I mean those regulations are already in place and they have to follow all those standards. So I don't know that putting additional mm -hmm. studies and regulations would be would be beneficial. Would well would give you as much bang as it it's costs to get done. done. Uh, is there anything further on this one? Um, yeah, I think one of the major problems is with this number four is the uh, will the existing streets adequately We're not serve? there yet. Oh, I thought Where's, we were on four. Uh, no, we're on three. The, the uh, talking about the um, detrimental uh, injurious conditions and and that's how come we were focusing on uh, the wetlands and okay. the issue of floods there um, but we'll be at the in one second anything further on the wetlands issue uh, nothing to add no okay then let's take a look at number four will the location design and size of the proposed use be adequately served by existing streets public facilities and services 
and uh, as they are now, I don't believe they will. Not a chance. And, and you know, they are going to be widening the street, providing a sidewalk and possibly bike lane along the northern part of Mountain View. But the main problem, pardon me, is uh, F Street to North Mountain View, that F Street intersection, and the fact that F Street to North Mountain View also needs widening and sidewalks beyond the swim center. And uh, I think that is the big issue. It is, but that is not their problem. It's our collective problem, and it's part of a grant that we have requested assistance with, with the U.S. Department of Transportation. And so, you know, we're working on that. But the piece of the, pro the, the puzzle that is part of their problem is that area, I think, not just from Sloniker, but I take it from that dog leg, if you will, uh, from there up to the entry to the, the property. I would like to see in this particular section uh, a further um, indication that there will be, not there should be, or we'll talk about it, but there will be a conditional use requirement that along that improved section of Mountain View, there will be bike lanes and sidewalks and appropriate buffer strips as the development goes forward. Yeah. Well, I would suggest that, that we put a, a additional condition on it uh, to address some of those things. Um, you're absolutely right. We're going to do improvements along North Mountain View there, and then when we get right before the worst part of Mountain View, we're, we're doing nothing. And I guess, Les, I'm really happy you're here tonight, and maybe you could address some of the traffic studies the city's done or some of the improvements that the city has planned on Mountain View. Please. Yeah, certainly. The... Um, I mean, there's a number of projects that are in the works, the reference to the Tiger Grant, uh, which proposed to make improvements to Mountain View from State Highway all the way out to Mountain View Park, you know, obviously pending. Um, the city also has currently in hand uh, in what's called a, a surface transportation program, urban grant for Mountain View between 6th Street and Joseph, uh, near the ball fields and near the fairgrounds. Um, that will uh, widen that roadway and include a roundabout at the 6th Street intersection. Uh, that is a few years out for construction at this point. Um, those are the two currently, well, currently pending projects on Mountain View where we continue to accumulate funds towards other projects along the corridors we've done for uh, quite a few years uh, and making you know, improvements along the way in, in uh, increments as funding allows. In terms of uh, traffic studies and the volumes that are out there, um, you know, the last set of uh, data that I have for traffic counts citywide uh, dates back to the 2011 time frame. Um, traffic counts in the east-west section of Mountain View are roughly 1,500 vehicles per day, which is somewhere in the neighborhood of what you see on First Street by East City Park, just for a point of comparison. Um, Two-lane roadways can handle significantly more volume than that. As you work your way around to the south, uh, as you approach F Street, uh, we're in the 3,800 to 4,000 vehicles a day range. Uh, from F to D, it bumps up to roughly 4,500 vehicles a day and continues to climb all the way down to Joseph Street up to about 7,000. Um, in comparison, uh, Third Street right out here, um, by City Hall and the uh, high school is about 8,300 vehicles per day. Uh, Sixth Street in a similar location but to the south is just shy of 10,000 vehicles a day. Two lane roadways 30 feet wide okay, for the most part as you work your way east from downtown. So it just gives you an idea that the numbers that we're seeing 1,500, maybe 2,000, 2,200 after a school is built, they're not abnormal at all within our street network. And the widening of the street to, I believe, is a 28-foot section on the east-west um, is in keeping with what we see on 3rd and 6th Street that's 30 feet wide with parking on one side. 
and yet they're carrying much higher volumes than we can see out on this stretch of mountains. So these numbers don't bother me at all from a traffic management perspective. Um, obviously the question's been raised a lot about uh, accidents and safety and you know, it's one of those things when you start dealing with traffic volumes and people's perception of safety, to them, perception is reality. They feel, you know, there's a lot of anecdotal information that says, oh, I almost got hit, or I was afraid of, or I know somebody that did. Okay, but when you go back and actually look at the records, and we pulled the data all the way back to 2005, right? So we have 11 years worth of traffic accident data. On Mountain View, just working my way from the site on back, in that time frame, there was one accident near Yeoman's Lane. There was one accident near Sloniker. At F Street, around the corner, there have been seven. D Street location has had eight. And B Street, boy, has, has had three. None of them in the third street, and I didn't go further south. My point is that over 10, 11 years, seeing eight accidents in the vicinity of an intersection, is quite low. Okay. Well, out of all of those, there is one incident involving pedestrian, two involving bicycles. Okay, thank you. I think that the the concern that I have, and the concern that I think this board ought to incorporate into any findings that we adopt has to do with thinking about the future because it's not just a body count on North Mountain View because I mean we we run into that all the time when when people say well you know it's not that bad nobody's died okay well we're not going to wait until somebody dies and we're also not going to wait to, to see a street built that when we have the opportunity to do it right, to do it with the, the, the bike lanes and the sidewalks and the other kinds of things that we want in neighborhood areas, we want adjacent to a school, we ought to do it. Can, and that's can, why I think we ought to have that. Can I continue yeah. my asking the last couple of questions? Go ahead. Okay. Les, I, I know it's been tossed around a, a few times. Has the engineering department talked lately about uh, putting an additional stop sign on F Street? Uh, F Street's not been looked at for a while. We do have a stop sign policy in place now as adopted by the council, so it would need to go through that process, determine if it would meet the warrants and criteria that are within that policy. We can certainly look at that again. Uh, in the past, as we looked at it, it really wasn't that close. Um, obviously, you know, traffic continues to grow, so we're certainly willing to look at that again. Uh, and there's specific problem times of the day. I mean, when school gets out at 3 o'clock or, or you know, we've got traffic going to Mountain View Park and the junior high school gets out and then all the people returning to work. I mean, there's specific problematic times of the day. Um, has there been any consideration for the redesign of, of Mountain View where it takes the dog leg around the corner? By no, the we have not looked at that one. And, you know, there are some restrictions there as it relates to right-of-way, which also applies on the east-west leg. If you start looking at the concept of full street construction, we have a limited right-of-way available, so then you start getting to the issue of That's how, right. how do you I, acquire I completely right. understand. Right. So. And that becomes part of the cost of the development that needs to be done so that it's done right, if we can. Um, does... Does the board wish to add anything associated with addressing this question of uh, the inadequacy of existing streets, public facilities, and services? Well, like I said before, I think it's a community problem, a city problem. I'm not so sure it's necessarily a total Logos problem. So I'm a little bit reluctant to put it in as a condition of approval for the conditional use permit but I think it's something that we should approach the city about being a little more focused on. So I'm reluctant to put it in as a condition. Okay. Mark? I, I have a question for the uh, Logos people, and that is, uh, do you have a time frame on the three different phases of the project? Would you speak from that? Excuse me, would you speak from sure. the thing so that we get it on the record? Sure. If, if we had the money in hand today, which everybody's talked about us having a lot of money, we don't have that much money, but, uh, you know, but we have a lot of good people. 
But if we had the money in hand today, it would be at least 30 months, wouldn't you say? 30, 30 months, two and a half years at least before we got started. Before you got started? And then any... Well, well I should say before the building construction started. Yeah, for the construction period and you know, through the design and permitting. Yeah, for design and permitting. And, and then we, the phase one is the uh, site development. This, and this infrastructure, phase one is infrastructure and the field. So it's not a building in phase one. Right. And then the building and then the chapel and the gym. Yeah, the performing arts center and the, the gym in the back. And then the chapel will be the, th the third part. Okay. Thank you. Any further comment? No. Okay. Annette? I have to go along with what Marshall is stating, that it's not a Logos problem. It's a community city issue as far as the traffic goes. Because, yes, what if 120 homes were built there instead okay. of the school? So what do you all want? Um, well, I guess I have heard what you want to do on that. And we'll get to it when we uh, adopt this or not. Um, and number five is, will the proposed use endanger uh, the public health or safety if located where it is proposed? Comments? Annette? Yes, no, maybe? No. Um, not an issue of Logos. Okay. Okay. The, uh, I think the only part of that is the street issue and, and of course, the floodplain and environmental issues. Um, I think it would be necessary to add as a condition the improvement of north Mountain View, the widening of it, and the sidewalk, and the bicycle lane. They would help the uh, safety of, of okay. the situation. Mark, comments? Uh, I like what Mark is saying. I think, uh, I don't think it's a, I don't think it endangers public health or safety. Uh, I, again, we're looking at you know, we wouldn't be sitting here if we were talking about a 120 single family unit dwelling. It would just happen. Uh, Not necessarily. Uh, but but we, anyway. We wouldn't would be having, we wouldn't be sitting it here. It would be a different conversation. Yeah, it would be a different yes, conversation. Yes, right. So, um, but I think we can, I think we can talk about that. I know the city has some uh, conditions that they'd like to put on it. Um, I think, Marshall, were you talking about this is where you wanted to talk about some an additional condition. Is that right? Well, I kind of talked myself out of it. Oh, did you? Uh, because I, <laughs> I hated to put the condition on this project. But I think it's an overall city condition that we need to to deal with. Um. Okay, well, is there anything else on number five that you'd like to discuss, Mark or Marshall? Okay. Um, number six, uh, does the proposed use meet all applicable development standards of the zoning code? And that we just, as a board, uh, assured uh, the rest of the world and ourselves that yes, it does. Uh, and then the last one, will the proposed use be in conflict with the comprehensive plan? Clearly it's not. You know, it's within the ambit of the comprehensive plan. We've thought about schools. We've thought about that kind of uh, development. It's an appropriate general site. It's the conditions of the site that give me problems. So having said all of that, um, there were some discussions of some alterations that might be put in the relevant criteria and standards, but let's do a, a full motion as to whether we accept or reject the um, uh, proposal itself. So is there a motion? I move that we accept the proposal. Okay. Is there a second? Uh, including the recommended conditions by the staff? Not yet. We're going to, let's do that separately. Okay, I'm sorry. I didn't hear Mark's motion then. It was just to, to approve the proposal. 
for the um, uh, conditional use permit for that uh, site. With conditions? There will be some conditions when we uh, get them going. Okay, well, I would prefer, Mark's motion said, with these well, put that in specific too? conditions. Sure. Okay, it's in there. And who seconds it? So I'll second it. Okay, it's on the floor. Is there further discussion before we talk about the conditions and in terms of the um, uh, relevant criteria and standards? Okay. Let's talk about conditions. Let's go. Uh, Aye. Is that? Aye. Aye. Aye or nay? Aye. Aye. Okay. Four ayes, one nay. And now it's time to address the relevant criteria and standards. Um, the uh, we have some standards. Uh, are those? Is that the way that you want to address it, or do you want to address it as uh, pages nine and ten of uh, the documents that you passed out to us? Uh, you know, I think it. it it might be better just to address the condition since we had, you know, moved from the approval of the conditional use permit and then it's usually the conditions right afterwards and then okay. the criteria and standards. Um, so is, is this the complete list of conditions that you're looking at? I don't have that in front of I me. I have it on page 11. Ashley. Our materials. Okay. Yeah, right there. Okay, the there we go. Yep. Okay, now I've got it too. Well, yeah, he. I guess he included the the conditions in the motion. I was just uh, unclear as to. I thought you were going to try to add on to some of the conditions, or was it just staff's recommended conditions? That was, that was I think right. staff's recommended conditions is okay. And and I would like, I I'd like somebody except that it doesn't look like anybody's going to make such a motion. I would like somebody to put the the honest. Um, our street development of Mountain View to be um, the uh, the street plus the bike lanes and the sidewalks and appropriate uh, um, uh, appropriate well, that wasn't part of the motion. I know that okay. I'm at the point of looking at the um, relevant criteria and standards. And I was hoping that a new relevant criterion would be. Uh, I, I think if you wanted those, Linda, they should have been put in the conditions and not in the relevant criteria. Yeah. So you would say that you don't want to have any of those things in the final activities of this board. Is that right? I'm saying that they shouldn't be in the relevant criteria. They should have been in the conditions of approval. And since you felt that you liked the uh, conditions for approval, that any idea that we should have sidewalks um, <clears throat> and um, uh, bike lanes and, and the rest of the street development should not be part of this. Should not be part of the relevant criteria. Okay. Is there any further uh, discussion on that point? Um, I think added to uh, criteria number five should have the addition of and include sidewalk and bike lane on North Mountain View from the uh, property to whatever the name of that street Sloniker. is. Sloniker. Uh, Sloniker Street. Okay. That's a, uh, an addition on page 11. Okay. Okay. Uh, point of order. That's a condition. It's that a condition. is a condition, but, but we... A recommendation for voted. CUP application... That's what we're talking about. Okay, we voted. Those. We voted on Mark's motion, and his motion was to uh, approve the application with the recommendation, recommended approvals of staff. Was that your motion, Mark? Conditions. That was it. Okay, but that was we, my understanding as well. And so, if we wanted to add an additional condition, that we should have added it at that point. And if we want to now, we can amend that. Go back and do it again. Okay. And Mark was on the Okay, so we would need a motion to, to amend reconsider it. is to what it's called. Yeah. Okay, so we need that motion. Would you like to have a motion to reconsider? I move that we reconsider. Is there a second? Okay, you uh, wonderful souls. Are you going to let the you chair? Can, you can make second it. 
I'll second it then. It's I just seconded it. Okay, it's on the table for discussion. We'd like to have the motion for reconsideration done. Uh, any discussion? Um, the Logos people have said that they would be happy to widen the street and add sidewalk. Um, and I don't think we're doing anything negative to this. Well, first of all, we need this. a vote on the motion to reconsider before we discuss that. Yeah, that's true. You got a little further into it. Right. Oh. Okay. Is there any, any on the procedural business of to reconsider anything? Okay. Yes or no? Aye. 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 Okay. Five yes. We're reconsidering it. Now, put your okay. issue on. I, I think it is something that the uh, developer is very willing to do. They've stated that they will do it and uh, are glad to include the sidewalk and possibly a bike lane. And uh, I think we should uh, have that as an inclusion to the... Um, Item five. Uh, number five. Yes. Yeah, number five. Okay. okay. Um, is that a motion? I guess it is a motion. Okay. Is there a second? I'll second it. Yes. Discussion. Um, unless you made the comment that there might not be enough right away to accommodate uh, sidewalks, bike lanes, and driving surface along along there. Yeah, certainly. Certainly, if if we're looking at a full road section, it, it, it is a constrained right of way, and there are some homes that are in proximity to that property line, so that would be somewhat challenging in terms of a full road section. If there's a desire, perhaps, to consider a sidewalk on one side only, maybe there's more opportunity to do that. I don't, well, I don't know that we really looked at the addition of bike lanes. That was not something that's come up previously in the discussions. It's always been the pedestrian aspect of it. Um, so Is it a complication as to much of that along that roadway is not in the city limits? There are portions of it that are not in the city limits, that is true. And so we'd have to work with the highway district in terms of if they were okay with us, um, you know, working with the developer to do something more than just the, the asphalt widening. I would assume they would not have a problem with that, but it's sometimes the maintenance aspects of it come into play. Um, you know, they don't necessarily want to be sweeping a curb line, um, you know, as compared to a rural road section that they normally deal with. I got the distinct impression that that um, the applicant uh, was willing to negotiate with whoever needed to be negotiated with, so this could could work. And I also got the impression from a number of the people who testified, both for and against, that there is a great deal of goodwill here for trying to do the job right the first time and not having to go redo it in five or ten years. So I think that Mark's motion is one that, that can be accomplished with relatively little muss and fuss. There will probably be a little bit of muss and fuss in it. I don't doubt that. But I think that doing it right now is so much better than having to go back and doing it again. So, and, and if I may, um, thank sure. you. The um, yeah, I, I agree. There's, there's. I think there was a lot of goodwill in the room today about, you know, what could be done, what would be best to be done, and, and a willingness and desire to see it done in the best way possible. I don't know that we necessarily heard from the people on the frontage of that east-west section of Mountain View that would be impacted directly by a widening of the roadway. And so we can't really say for sure what their response will be. I, I understand and, that. And, and if I may, I, I guess I would suggest that perhaps if this is a motion and a condition that we'd like to see carried forward um, by the board, that you put some flexibility in that motion so that we can work with the developer, work with the existing conditions on the ground, how much right away we have you know, as we go along, and it varies, to come up with what we can consider the best solution to satisfy the need for pedestrian and potentially bicycle route. How would you like to address that question I guess that I Les would, has brought up? Yeah, I guess I would like to re-reamend 
and uh, well, why don't we let this motion fail and then we'll okay the motion. Uh, can I change this motion at all? You can just, just withdraw vote, the just vote. vote. Just vote. I would suggest that we vote on this motion, and if it fails, then we have a new motion. If that's necessary. That sounds simple enough. Okay. All those in favor of the motion say aye. All those opposed say no. No. Done. Aye. Okay. Possibly a, a new motion. I propose a new motion, and that would be to include a sidewalk in the widening of the street and make no mention of a bicycle lane. And that possibly would also have to be a sidewalk on one side of the street and uh, to get it done within the uh, the right way and if that's the case then I would also suggest that it be done on the south side of the street but that's within the negotiating of the city and the developer you lost your second in me <laughs> okay I, maybe I think what we're talking about here is is making a good faith effort. Do we have a second of the motion? No. Is, is there a second that failed for lack of a second? So now, I, try I think what we're, we're we're trying to control things that are outside our control, and and that's the problem that we're going to run into because you know if we put a condition, an affirmative condition on this, that's out outside of our control and outside of of Logos's control. That just sets it up for failure. Um, and what I hear everybody saying is, you know, there's a tremendous amount of goodwill. And I think what we would like to do is impose a good, a, a good faith, a requirement to act in good faith towards making these improvements. Because I think that's about all we can do because we're talking about the highway district. We're talking about property owners. Uh, Why don't we say something like this? See if you like this and then you can right. make that motion. Uh, that we add to number five the language that says, instead of the developer shall, I mean, we, we have that language. And then we have an and. The developer will make every good faith effort to establish the area, the Mountain View um, uh, development in this area as uh, a full street with a bike lane and um, uh, sidewalk and adjacent improvements. Every good faith thing doesn't say you got to do it just exactly like well, this. I mean, it says make a good faith effort. You like it or not? Yeah, I, I think that's a, I think that's as as good as we can get. I, I don't know. I'm I'm open to. I'm 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 willing to be educated on this. Because I think we're trying to control factors that are outside our control, and that's that's what we that are problem. supposed to be doing, Mark. That's what that's well, what I mean, they gave us the job right, but, for. But condition the, the, if we're imposing conditions, we're imposing an affirmative condition that says you have to do this, and if you don't do this, then you're. But you see, we're not it. doing that. We're saying make every right. good faith effort. Right, I, and I hear what you're saying. I mean, there's some things that we can say you must do, and and those are outlined right here, but. Um, when we're talking about putting in bike lanes and we're talking about sidewalks and we're talking about these things, we can't control these other entities. And, and certainly they have no control. They can hope that these other entities will, will play ball with them. And, and what I'm hearing from them is that they'll act in good faith and they'll do these things. But and that's my, what we need. Right. And my concern, is, my concern is putting on a condition that is outside their control, it's outside our control. Uh, and, and I hear our public works telling us that hey, there are some other considerations that we need to consider. So I, I, support, I support the idea of putting something in there that uh, the applicant will act in good faith mm -hmm. in, in making this as, as user-friendly as humanly possible under the circumstances. And, and I would love to see it happen, but I think we're, we, we've got a very limited amount of space there. And I, 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 it I, sounds not, to me yeah, like so we I'm, don't have a motion here. And so, given that, we have um, a, a motion to adopt the recommendation of the staff that's listed on uh, pages 11 and 12 of the uh, Board of Adjustment uh, document that we had. I beg your pardon? We don't have that motion anymore. Well. We're at a standstill now. Well, let me, well, let me see we if can I can. can have that motion. Let me, let me do this. Um, where, as I understand, we, we have reopened 
Um, we were talking about number five. Um, I think we could use the language of number five as it is with the addition that the applicant will act in good faith to uh, act in good faith to try to make this as, as I don't know how to say it as user friendly as possible. I guess I'm a little confused. Are we talking but, about uh, conditions of approval, or are we talking about relevant criteria? I'm, I'm, I was talking about a condition of approval. As I understood it, we open this up to review. The, uh, page okay. 11, Marshall. Okay. Page 11, yeah. Number 5, I think, is what we yeah. were talking okay. about. That's All what right. we're dealing with. I just wanted with. to clarify. So, now, and I support that, but I think the language is precatory in the sense that, that it may be worth the paper it's written on, but I, I have, I'm comfortable that the applicant is, uh, is willing to act in good faith because I, I really think that uh, the applicant doesn't want to create a situation or wants to eliminate a situation where there's madness and craziness on that section of the road. I think I think they're going to do what they can. So I'm, I'm comfortable moving to approve this with the conditions as they are written by staff and adding on number five uh, a, a requirement that the applicant act in good faith in working with the other entities to uh, accommodate these accoutrements that we would like to have there, a bike path, a sidewalk. How, however it is. I'm uh, Les, do you have something you need to... Yeah, if, if I may, I, I guess I would... <laughs> I'm going to put on my, my Rod Hall hat for just a moment, but I'm sure he would be squirming a little bit about some of the nebulous aspects of a good faith effort. I'm squirming right? myself. So if, if I may, I would suggest perhaps that if, if the desire here is really to address the pedestrian corridor as their, your, your first choice, right, perhaps we put something in there to the effect that um, you know, they would widen the roadway. They would work the city staff to identify a pedestrian corridor on the east-west connection from Sloniker to the site that could be included as part of the project. Perfect. Something to that. Yeah. Okay. Is there? Sounds do you good. move that? I will move that. I as there's okay. I will second. There you go. Okay. There's a motion and a second. Is there further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Nay. And so here we have it. Now let's get to the uh, adoption of all of it as a, um, unless that was the that form was of the motion. That was the form of the motion. Okay. To, to so, do that. And that, as I understood it, that was what we wanted to talk about was that. And okay. And so. That. So I think we're on to relevant criteria. Okay. And I'm ready to listen to your <clears throat> uh, what you wish to do about the relevant criteria and standards. I want to tell you that all of this stuff, all of these steps we have to take are simply to assure the record in this so that if somebody else has to look at what did that board do about this particular project, they will know that at each step of the way we approved it appropriately and we addressed the standards that the law requires us to. So with the last part of this, the relevant criteria and standards as to why did we do as a board what we just did, which is approve it. So I leave it to you, Mr. Munson. I have reviewed the relevant criteria and standards as proposed by staff. Uh, I don't have any objections to that. I don't know if there's anything that anybody just feels make needs a to motion. Be I'll move that we adopt it. them. We move. I move that we adopt the relevant criteria and standards as proposed by staff. Is there a second? I second it. There's a motion and second to adopt the relevant criteria and standards as proposed by staff. Is there discussion? Hearing none, those in favor say aye. 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 Yay. So we've got a decision. Congratulations, folks. You have an approval of both the conditional use permit and the variance, and I hope to see all those trees. Now, um, we have one more item on our agenda. Board communications and other business. Do we have any? Nothing I don't. from staff. Then I would uh, entertain a motion to adjourn. I move that we adjourn. Second. We're done. Thank, Thank you. you very much, everyone.